Welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, a show about weirdos, with your hosts, John Fahey, Aaron Peter, and Matt Brutzone. Hello folks, welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, it's a show about weirdos, doggone it. My name is John Boy, I am your host, John Francis Fahey, joining me as ever is the pinnacle and perfection of perversion, Michelangelo's David Duke of Knee. Aaron Joseph Peter. Not now, Pino. <laughs> <laughs> Not now. I'm busy. Okay. Busy doing what? Breaking fucking balls. Mm. And looking at them. Yep. Oh. And looking at them. Yeah. Are they had nipples on them. I didn't know. <laughs> these, these nipples taste like balls. Look, yeah. This is the tiniest pair of tits I've ever seen. <laughs> well, <laughs> weird. Huh. Call me a, call me a tit hog. I'll bite. <laughs> <laughs> To your right, my left, handsome Matt Brousseau, the Cape God, Gape God. Don't bite him. Don't don't bite him? Yeah. The balls? Yeah. Yeah, please don't bite Jesus him. Jesus Christ. Please, Hammer, don't bite him. <laughs> please, Hema. Don't. Hema. Hema? Hema. You, you hurt the Hema? <laughs> the Hema hurt you? <laughs> the, the Hema hurt you. Seems like you have a very deep and personal relationship with this Hema. <laughs> uh... Ah, <laughs> that was good. Uh, uh, the French, or uh, that was perfect. Ah, <laughs> ah, the French champagne. Well, he is French. He doesn't have to say it. <laughs> ah, moi, <laughs> moi, moi. You say moi. How do you like it? How do you like it? <laughs> moi, meow, moi, meow, moi. Meow, meow, meow. Um. Matt, we are uh here uh to uh finish up uh this uh this horrible Ervil man. Yeah, yeah. Did I mean, you see? Did you see? What the- Ervil lies in the <laughs> hearts of men. That's right. Uh, did you see the big news on the Patreon about it? Yes, yes. Ervil, would a, you like to say what it was? Uh, well, we had one of our listeners apparently. Uh, it's a lady. Uh, had uh, had family that uh, uh, you know worked at a place <clears throat> that Ervil would work. Like what? Like Dairy Queen? Queen? No. Foster's Freeze. A prison. Uh, oh. Oh. Would he frequent it as an inmate? Yeah. Well, well, I guess that was sort of a spoiler. My bad. Oh, well, I mean, you know, it's it's not, I mean, I think you can guess there's not going to be a... Happy ending? Yeah. Yeah. For the man who killed his brother and then tried to massacre an entire town. Yeah. I thought he went to just Disneyland at the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. That's it. We did it, Mama. We bad. Yeah. Now, you, I think you'll find that money <laughs> was often an issue for the got people who... Him too. Yeah. Wow, he's just like me, man. Yeah. Man. That guy's got his own planet. <laughs> and even he's having it. <laughs> so can I read can I read the uh uh, uh the thing from uh, Maddie? Yeah, sure. Um Hey Kings. I like that big I thing. love that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Es- ethnic Mormon here, to be clear, not a Mormon, just descended from Mormon pioneers of from all four grandparents. Married to Seattle Mormon and born and raised slash living in Salt Lake City. Think ethnic Jew, but from Mormons. I'm also a descendant of Ben Johnson's brother, William. The Johnsons were indeed one of the Mormon clans that fled Utah to Colonia Diaz, Mexico, to continue practice, pl- practicing polygamy. My great grandfather was born there. Later, moved back to the states and played for the Detroit Lions, making his white English ass the first Mexican-born NFL player. Hey, this was in the 1930s, and it was the Lions. So, does it even count? <laughs> uh, instead of opting for the cool kids Mormon cult, my parents raised me in a different, worse cult, the Evangelical Born Again Christian movement. Naturally, in addition to my knowledge of Mormon uh. lore, I also all but memorized the Bible. I can confirm that a Paul was Saul, but after seeing Christ in a vision. <laughs> Changed his name to Paul. Yeah, that was the best Good choice. choice. Yeah, uh, it's, it's just like Paul. It's yeah. like Paul to yeah. do that. It's just like Saul. <laughs> um, but I heard that Paul has no good car ideas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, this is after Jesus died, though. So did he really see him, or was he taking advantage of a popular name to lead his own cult? I'll never tell. <laughs> <laughs> B. Paul does mention the three heavens, but doesn't describe what he meant by that. The Mormons interpret that as terrestrial. Telestial and celestial. And yes, they do believe if you make it high enough, you get to be a god on your own planet. Though most Mormons nowadays are kind of eh about this, I know a lot of them still really hope this is the case. <laughs> hoping. Here's hoping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> I'll be praying for you. Um, it's a religion that's a lot more like a business mixed with the Masonic order in a lot of ways. Anyways, I literally love you lubricated little lads. Sorry for the long comment. Thanks as always for the outstanding content. And if you all have questions about Mormonism or weird evangelical crap, hit me up. Hell yeah. Update, gentlemen. This is uh, eight, oh, yeah. eight hours ago. Okay. No, I, we can, might as well save that one then. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, sure. Yeah. The update. Yeah, it's the update. Was the 
Oh, that was, uh, yeah, yeah, when we yeah, get into, yeah, uh, yeah. all right, all right. Word, 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 word. word. Well, you tell me when I can read that, and we'll, 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 we'll go back to, to Mila. Maddie. Maddie. Yeah. Why did I say hey, Mila? Hey, we, we can go anywhere, pal. Ah, no, That's I, Mormonism. I think baby. I'm going to pivot to Mila. Okay. Maddie? I don't like Paul it. changed his name to Saul. Yeah, I mean, hey, it hey. happens. Look, mate, you just found Jesus. Saul good, baby. <laughs> That's all good, man. You better call Paul Saul. <laughs> Paul Goodman. That's a good Jew. He's a good man, Paul. <laughs> uh-huh. Thorough. Mm-hmm. So, uh, where I last left you, um, uh, they had uh, Irville's uh, Church of the Lamb had a uh, had tried to take down an entire town of that his brother mm. and his his church was living in. Yeah, and uh, they uh, uh, the the town uh, four people were were killed, and the survivors went to a court to. Uh, to uh, um, testify against him and give their accounting of the of what happened, and uh, a man with a shotgun uh, clumsily did not shoot them, and uh, ran away after he. I don't. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> Clumsy man. Yeah. Butterfinger. Yeah. Real. Whoopsie. Real butter gun. Uh, and uh, uh, and so uh, the the Mexican authorities uh, put out uh, a warrant for Irville's uh, arrest. And uh, he uh, he fled to the United States, and land of the free, baby. The lamb was on the lamb. Mm, like and uh, so so um, in uh, in the so we're around 1974 right now. Nice. And uh, uh, he was um, he is what he is 54. Or so I believe. Let me see. No, he's uh, okay. Let me see. I think his name is 45. Forty-five, fifty. He's near his. Anyway, he's mid mid fifties. We'll say. Yeah, probably looked just like Brad Pitt in his fifties. Yeah. Uh huh. Some weird ass dick. Irville. Uh, let me see. So, okay. Pfeiffer. So Irvel, uh, he uh, he he moves to the, to the United States because he has a, there's this man named Victor Chenoweth who has who has joined. Uh, he already had Irvel already had was married to one Chenoweth, Lorna Chenoweth, because his the Chenoweth's mother had joined, and the Chenoweths, you know, big Mormon family, you have to imagine. Yeah. So Victor, I think he was a cousin or something of of one of the Chenoweths. He joins and he's got a bunch of money. Mm, so nice. so Irvel needs that because he wants to. Uh, Grow his church, and mm-hmm. you know the the whole barren idea for years was they'll start a town, it'll become an oasis, and mm-hmm. they can practice polygamy without you know being kicked out of places. Yeah, without these nosy neighbors. Yeah, make the neighbors yeah. family. Yeah, then get nosy. She's Chenna with child. <laughs> so, uh, uh, okay, checks out. But Irville also, you know, he wants to grow the church, so he starts sending out. He he finds large fundamentalist groups of, of Mormons, and he sends them. He sends out basically like feelers with, with proclamations of how his church is is the right one, mm-hmm. and yeah. he he deserves uh, to be followed, and he's the only true prophet, mm. and one of the baddest motherfuckers of all time. He would show up to make his case at their place, and he would just preach for hours Check and out my hours. Wives. And they would go, okay, thank you. And then when he left, they would beef up their security because they were like, that guy should not be allowed oh anywhere God. near here ever again. That's a good idea. Yes. Well, join, just leave. <laughs> yeah. Well, because they would, they would say things like, uh, so in your letter you said a 10% tithing. And he would go, well, you know, you can just pay what you want, really. It gives a fuck. And he was like, I'll just take it. T-. And they're like, okay, so I'm already. fine. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, yeah, 10, 30s. Take school. pretty much anything. Yeah. A mm-hmm. couple of wives, maybe. Ten percent of your family. Yeah, but it became very clear. Like, um, not only was there a group bigger than his, but um, the issue, he was not to be trusted. Yeah. Uh, but he did find, uh, he did get a feeler. Uh, 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 you know, when he sent this out, he did get a response from, from one man who was running his own uh, uh, Mormon uh, faction, a man named uh, Bob Simons. Hmm. And Bob Simons had, uh, uh. A different idea of, of what his church was. Uh, he believed that he was uh, descended from um, the American Indian, and the American Indians were one of the uh, groups labeled by Joseph Smith as uh, one of the lost tribes of Israel. Right. Of course. Yeah. 
And so, uh, so they, you know, I mean, never mind that there were multiple, multiple, multiple tribes of Native Americans. Right, right. Yeah, they're well, all one. They're uh, all the same as the one in New York that uh-huh. that he was told was the lost tribe of Israel. Yep, and right, Ethiopians right, right. too. Right. Yeah. Um, and it, this is from um the uh, another book about Irville, uh, Prophet of Blood, by Ben Bradley and Dave Van Otta. They said, uh, um. So this guy, this guy uh, Bob Simons, he he leaves Utah for California. He he works in a factory. Then he has a he has a nervous breakdown, becomes violent and suicidal. Uh, he's chained to a hospital bed for five days. Uh, then he goes to another mental facility where he gets two dozen treatments of electric shock. Nice. Um, th- this subdues his violent tendencies, um, <clears throat> but his mental condition con- continued continued to deteriorate. And so this is from the uh, Blood Prophet. Prophet of Blood. For the next 10 years, Bob drifted in and out of lunacy. Daily 300, 350 milligram dose of de- depressant Thorazine someone facilitated the business of coping with life, but Bob found it difficult to hold a job. Yeah. He continued to have intense visions. Once, his wife Mary recalls, he imagined himself an Indian and proceeded to virtually become one. She says his countenance turned beet red, and he began alternately speaking in tongues and gibberish, and she thought it sounded like an Indian dialect. All his people were tired. And then she... Oh, God. And then she... It's you, a Thor scene. Then no a, wonder. And, and apparently this, this beet red uh, complexion would uh, stay with him for the rest of his life. And that was part of the proof that he was... He was actually a... Uh, yeah. Red yeah. Man. yeah. Yeah. He's going after the casino. Yeah. And so... Uh, Do you... Uh, <laughs> you know, was this um, coincidence? Was this psychosomatic? Was this... A side effect of uh, getting fried on Thorazine, yeah, maybe yeah. drugs, yeah, uh, drugs, electrocution. Electric, yeah, I mean, what a what an Who's what a say? perfect little like oh how convenient, um, or just like punching his butthole really hard, you know? Yeah, he's probably just always irate. <laughs> yeah, I, I, and uh, it's also convenient. I'm a member of the irate coination. <laughs> what I think I think is especially important is that it's it's convenient. Of course, um, because of course. as as Anderson writes in in the book, he uh, his book. Um, what do you think he was faking it? No, no, no. I think he blood pressure, but like, you, what? Show me a Native American who's beat red. Right. Yeah, I mean, I like. There's a. I have a probably a, Irish. I have a friend from college who has like a little of the you know, but those are red spots. You know, it's not the same. Mm. Red you know? spots. Yeah, yeah. Freckles. No. What was it like the uh, Gorbachev who the oh was yeah, yeah, yeah 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 that's mm. yeah that. No, that was Yeltsin. Mm. Gorbachev. It was Gorbachev. Was Gorbachev the, the spill. Yeah. Yeah. Ukraine shape. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Coincidence? <laughs> Ukraine. Well, hey, so. Ain't gonna <laughs> uh, so this is interesting, and, and, and this is maybe uh, like a, a, you know, a kind of broad, but I think in this case, in, in this whole story's case, it, it makes sense. Uh, he said, the Mormon faith provides mentally ill with a uh, potent argument to explain away their disability. Mormons suffering from schizophrenia or paranoia, those with Messiah persecution complexes, need look no further than Joseph Smith's prophecy about the one and mighty strong prophet to find evidence that their symptoms of illness are actually signs of sanctity. Yeah, you can say that about, you know, a lot. Yeah, a lot even of, non-Morbid. Uh, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, but it seems like we're running across a lot of them here. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, especially the majority of them are not, uh, but this is a but story they're, about they're, those. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, I mean, it's, but I mean, even in the same family, there's, well, there's, yes, there's yes, rarely yes, yeah. a reasonable person. Yeah. Well, you can. I mean, well, for land seems pretty reasonable. Yeah, I mean, when you're out in the middle of nowhere too, it's easy for all you to get crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's a big part of it. Yeah. And also, you're not. I mean, you're not going to school. You're not meeting other people. Yeah, the beatings. Yeah, yeah, there's plenty of the beatings. So, uh, so Bob invites um, uh, Irville uh, to come over and you know, you Chop know. It up. So what actually Bob does? He sends he sends like a list of um, of three questions, you know, to like prove your faith. You know what? Yeah. Is your favorite guy? <laughs> yes, I mean, exactly. Yeah. God? <sighs> so, so then two guys uh, claiming to be from Irville's uh, group, a church, show up, and it's actually Irville and some other guy with, like, wigs on. Oh, I love wigs. Multiple wigs? Uh, I think they each have w- oh. uh, one separate. They, Got it. They each have their own Multiple wig. Multiple guys yeah. with wigs on. Two guys with wigs. Should have worn headdresses. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Fe- feathers. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, Irville and Bob kind of have, like, a... <laughs> Crazy off? Whoa. They like, it's a crazy... Morpheus is fighting Neo! <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so they basically, like, they start just, like, preaching at each other for hours, and then they both start just, like, competition, speaking in tongues, rolling on the ground for hours. Mm. 
Uh, I mean, and that other guy must have felt awkward. Is it, yeah, well, well, no. I mean, he was like, well, this proves <laughs> one keeping, of them. He's keeping is score. He's yeah. like, yeah. Uh, did he say, did he say, blah? Uh, point point yeah. to Irville. That was an actual word. Yeah. I think Irville. I think Irville, <laughs> I think Irville finally flipped his wig. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, so they did this for a few hours, and you know, and then went on their way. And uh, just fuck already. Yeah. Well, Bob well, Bob had some wives that he could have sex with. No, each other. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, if, if you're you're getting into like that kind of uh, for. Fever pitch competition with somebody, yeah, to the point where no, that's cool, man. But then I, bet, also, I bet Bob did a rain dance and shit. I bet it, but you know, for whoever's doing it, it proves how in touch with God they are. So oh, it's like yeah. it's not even them well, doing they're it, both man. Just having a fit on the floor. Yeah, say. basically. Imagine you like you show up to deliver mail and you're like, this guy's uh, flopping around. I don't know if this is the right place. Someone order a pizza, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. extra large sausage. Ooh. So uh, so this goes on like you know they leave and then they keep up some correspondence a little bit and and Irville keeps stopping by because Bob has he is he is he's a lot of acres of land and he has some money and it's just him. So Irville's like if I can just get this guy in my church, Bob, then I get all this fucking money from all this shit. Look at all and my this shit. Land. Look at all my shit. Uh, and then at some point, um, someone involved with Irville's church goes over and they're talking with Bob and kind of lets on that. Uh, uh, that guy who was over who with the wig, Mr. Steelson, he called himself, he uh, was kind of interested, wondering if Bob wanted to uh, give up any of his wives to uh, Irville. Mm, good question. And so Bob uh, puts two and two together, and he figures out uh, Mr. Steelson is Irville, and, uh, and he writes him this angry letter saying, Mr. LeBaron, Mr. Steelson, you are now dealing with the man you claim to be. You and your people... Through revelations from the darker regions, have professed by the mouth of one of your servants in my home a desire to remove from me something very precious that God has given unto me, namely Linda, one of my women. Oh. Consider this letter to be an open challenge to your power and your authority. Do with it what you may. Hmm. Uh, Fly I, upon uh, thee. I, I, I think the, the, uh, the wording is, is very telling of... My women. Yeah, no, well, remove, the- remove from me something very precious. Ah, yeah. yes. That God gave me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's like, well, was what, what is it, like your favorite bookcase? No, no, it's this lady. Yeah, 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 Linda. Yeah. Well, he was on the warpath, in fairness. Yeah, well, that's yeah. the tongues for you. <sighs> so that's a bummer for Irville. You know, he's striking out everywhere. Uh, to cheer himself up, he does marry his final wife, who we talked about in the last episode, the 16-year-old Rena Chenoweth. Uh. And they have that. It is his 13th wife, um, and uh, he, I, I believe he's, I think he's 50, and she's uh, 16. Good Christ almighty. Uh, and he'd already been molesting her for a few years at this point. Oh, God. And they have Make that, it official, that, you know? that terrible sex. Make an honest child out of her. Uh, oh, God. And so this is, this is 1975 now. And uh, so, Irvin, you know, maybe that cheers him up a little bit. Who knows? It clearly didn't cheer her up. And uh, <laughs> and uh, um, and she would she would say later that um, Irvin said God uh, had told him about that, but also that if she didn't do it, uh, do what? If she didn't marry him, oh. then then God would kill her too. Oh shit! And he would work through me and yeah. my machete. I am, yeah. his, I am his instrument. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you know, but she believed that he was the, you know, the one and mighty. So just uh, can't make her come. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's so weird how that it's works. Weird yeah, how it's weird. You know, yeah, the all powerful, all yeah. mighty. Can't, just, you know, like yeah. the one and the mighty. His breath stinks. Yeah, and he just on his come. Don't even get me started. Uh, so, uh, uh, limp, dick, slack jawed. So he can't get any money from all these people. He does marry uh, oh, money. He, his, this this uh, this very young young lady, and uh, and then later the real the real brutal part of 1975 for for uh, Irville, Irville is that uh, his brother Verlan uh, sends a peace treaty and says, "Hey, you know, it's like I don't want to do this anymore. Like, like, look, you do your thing, I'll do my thing. Like, we don't have to fight. I'm not gonna ever do anything against you." And Irville, uh, you know, in his genius, immediately sees this, that... Weakness, baby. This is an act of war. Of course. Yes, yes. And so he, hol- he holds up for, uh, like, a few weeks, and he comes out with uh, two 18-page screeds uh, entitled, Response to an Act of War. Huh. Yeah. And so he devises his plan to, uh, to create a funeral... Uh, that Verlan will go to... Oh, my God, and ambush him. Yeah, and ambush him at the funeral. Wow, that is 
fucking nefarious. Because they had a bunch of like he would he would think of all these plans of okay he's like what are, like we could get we could we could steal a Mexican police car, and then pull him over with the car and shoot him. And he's like, okay, but yeah. okay, we, we probably can't steal it. And he's like, well, another thing we could do is we could, we could build a bomb and put it under his church and blow up the church. And they're like, well, we probably can't do anything. It's not, that's a lot of work. We don't want to build bombs. And so the next thing they think of is the funeral thing. And they say, okay, so they call up for Lynn's, one of his. So they, there's, there's people plotting with Irville. With Irville. Him yeah, and the voice yeah. is in his head. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the gang's all here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so he does. <laughs> so around this time, he does. He, he, there's like people have, you know, various people have joined here and there. One of them was um, a man named uh, uh, Dean Vest. Dean Vest. Yeah, I knew you were going to pick up at that. Good name. Good name. Yeah. Dean uh, Vest. Yeah, he did a couple photos. Yeah. Uh, Dean's Dean's dad I'm Dean Vest. Dean's dad had joined uh, Joel Joel LeBaron's church. Jeez. <laughs> Dean Vest. Uh, Dean's dad had joined Joel LeBaron's church, and then uh, when Joel was killed, he was like, "I don't really trust that Irville guy," and so he got out of there. But Dean grew up, uh, uh, and then eventually went to the Navy, and then to prison, and then he found himself. Uh, uh, under Ervil's tutelage, and he was he was like the guy who knew how to use weapons. So he taught the people in the group how to shoot guns and this stuff. This is the guy. He went to Navy and then to prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a classic Ervil <laughs> disciple. <laughs> exactly, yeah. classic Navy to prison to Ervil. Yeah, pipeline. yeah. Here's how to wield a knife. <laughs> And coming up after that, a little <laughs> toilet wine. <laughs> oppressive institution to oppressive institution <laughs> to oppressive institution. Yeah. Huh. yeah. And uh, here's the best part. Gay sex in both. <laughs> <laughs> All three. <laughs> You're going to like it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, so yeah, Irville had guys to plan, you know, military operations for him or with him. And so they, so they said, okay, well, we'll do this funeral thing. And so their first idea. Uh, Please tell me it's going to be Irville's funeral. Please tell me it's underwater. What's this Navy guy going to do with all this dry land yeah, in Mexico? Right. I would love it if Irvel just came sitting up out in his coffin with like an AK. Yeah, that, like, would be, ah! that would be pretty clever. But uh, <laughs> instead what they do is they, uh, someone with a fake name calls one of uh, Verland's mothers-in-law and says, hey, I'm thinking about joining your church, but like I can't go to you. Can you come to me? Because I can't be like seen with you. Can you come to me and just like see, like talk to me about it, and maybe I'll join? And uh, Verland's mother, you know, thinking, okay, I'll bring people in. Uh, she starts driving to this house, and then she gets halfway there, and she stops, and she gets like, she's like, I had a really bad feeling, and she drives back. And that was of uh, someone from Irville's, a woman in Irville's church under a fake name, was going to call her to an abandoned house, and then kill her there. And then Verland would have a funeral for her. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, so he was going to create a real death. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. His own mom. Uh, no, Verland's mother-in-law. So oh, yeah, yeah. Verland's yeah. mother's-in-law. One of her mothers. I mean, he's got one like ten other ones. Yeah. yeah. Wait, who? I like to think of myself as the cool mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was one of my favorite. She was one of my top eight mothers-in-law. <laughs> yeah, I'm showing up to the funeral. <laughs> <laughs> So, so this didn't it's work. not like Meredith's mom or something. <laughs> yeah. Right, babe? <laughs> <laughs> Your mother <Yeah>. sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Bitch, right? His old crone. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> so Ver, Verlan would, um, he would, um, he would help, he would give notes for that book, Prophet of Blood, uh, that I read from earlier. Um, and so he said in the book, he said, she had a, just a really bad feeling and she turned around. Seems like she might be the prophet. You know? Yeah. I mean, of all hey. the people, right? <laughs> Make way, fellas. Yeah. So, uh, so now Irville is like, and plus Irville, like, during, while he was sitting, wait, at like, people had gone out to do that. He had said, you know, at one point he was sitting with some other people, and he closed his eyes and he said, "I heard a shot. She's dead." Oh God! Yeah. No, you didn't, Irville. Uh oh, yeah. God's a trick. God's a trickster. Yeah, goofy guy. I bet he was red after that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, speaking of which, so Irville was, he's really bummed out, so he said, all right, you know what we can do? We can kill Bob. <laughs> he's alone. Yeah. Well, yeah, with all his wives. Uh, so they, um. Bob? So, Bob Simon. The, oh, the yeah, Indian, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thread man. And uh, so, so Irville, uh, someone from Irville's group calls Bob and says, um, hey, uh, I now believe you are the, 
the <laughs> one and mighty. And I believe that because I talked to these these five Indian chiefs. Oh. And uh, they want to meet you. Who said this? Well, someone from Irville's group yeah. under a fake got name it, calling it, Bob. It. And so uh, you're uh, the chief now. Yeah, you're the chief now, dog. So there's two two guys. Uh, I uh, I don't have their names, but um, they would remember this, and uh, it would it would come up later, uh, maybe like a decade or so later. I can't remember, but uh, they they go to Bob's. They pick him up. They drive him out, and at some point during the trip, Bob jokes to one of them. He goes, <laughs> "You know, you could just take me anywhere and kill me if you wanted to right now, but I I know you're not going to do that. I trust you guys." Uh, and then they killed him. And, wow! Yeah. And later, he, and they brought up the joke. He brought. Well, he said that joke to yes. them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they remember. They're like, "Oh, they, guy, of course they remembered like, it." This yeah. guy's funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Funny how? They're like, "Is he funny like, how?" <laughs> Jesus, Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Maybe he was a prophet. Mm. Mm. I met you guys tonight, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was those wigs? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so. Thank you guys. So uh, Bob, yeah. So uh, Bob was dead. His his body would later be found because one of these men would uh, bring authority t- to the site. One of the few of the murderers whose bodies would be found. Um. Uh, and so the 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 next one is this the man Dean Vest, right? A tall man, about six seven, would wear like big platform boots. He was a giant six, man. Six seven and platform yeah. boots, the Frankenstein. But he was a very insecure man, so it was like perfect guy for Irville to like, yeah. you know, mm. um, call him tiny. And uh, by nineteen seventy five, he was kind of like he was kind of over the the whole church, the land with the God thing. Who uh, was uh, Dean Vest? Oh yeah, Dean Vested. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're telling me? Yeah, yeah. Are you I telling know, me yeah, Dean yeah. Vested? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Carry on, I guess. <laughs> for, 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 <laughs> good job. Very good, John. First off, he uh, he he already had a wife and some kids in the, in Washington State, uh, who had who had lived with him under the Church of God and and the the wife and she took the kids and she was like, look, man, like I don't I don't really like this, so I'll make you an ultimatum: either you join me in Washington State, or like I get the kids and I don't see you anymore. Mm. And so, 1975, he's like, all right, I've Kind of wanted to go see them. Also, him and Rena Chenoweth, uh, the sixteen-year-old, had originally uh, been in love. Uh, and Rena has like a whole diary about like, oh, I really love this man. Dean? Yeah. And they went to Irville and were like, hey, can I marry Rena? Mm. And I Ir- could have her. And then Irville, like, if not long after, God told Irville that he was supposed to marry Rena. That's a good idea. Yeah. So. Yeah. Plus, he's been like finger banging me and shit. Oh God, dude. But but you know it's like uh, you know Dean probably believed Irville, uh, you know, you know was that guy and God told him those things. But you can imagine the, the bummer of the coincidence of oh yeah, yeah yeah I mean you float the idea and then Irville uh, and God yeah. claims and, her and for Irville. Dean here's, you know? here's the deal, man. She's like a Brooke Shields type, you know. Like, oh Jesus God. Christ! You gotta listen. To I mean, you read you read the article in High Times, right? <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Come on, I mean, think about it. Well, you wouldn't want to upset the Almighty, would you? <laughs> I, I like how they talk like they're from Brooklyn. <laughs> Think about it. So, but also, Dean has this uh, this salvage barge that he's been fixing. You mean a trash boat? Basically, yeah. But it's worth about ten thousand dollars. Hey, right. Minus the trash. Right. Oh, never mind the trash. And once he fixes it, he tells Irville. He says, you know, it's like I'll I'll fix it up. They have a deal that he'll give Irville half when he sells it. And so, uh, but you know, so Dean makes this, uh, he has this idea about leaving and, uh, he's going to take his trash uh, boat with him, you know, uh, take your shit and get out of here. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, leave, half, leave half of it though. <laughs> but it was, it's just like such a amazing coincidence that like not long after he said this, God then told Irville that it was time for Dean to ascend to heavenly throne. He had earned his place up. Oh, nice. The celestial yeah. heaven. I fucking speed up the pra- the transition, man. And that, that you plan it already, buddy. And that God actually wanted one of uh, Irville's women to do it. Oh, that's kinky. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to waste your time down here with us mortals. Not, yeah. not Rena. No, not Rena. Okay. No, no, no. no that's... That'd be sick. Look, God's not an idiot, John. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's a sicko. Huh. He's not yeah, an idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That makes a lot of no. sense. He's got, you know. Probably some Thorazine and electroshock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, 
And uh, Erville, really, he's, he said, uh, God, he goes to his wife, Vondo White, and he says, God said, like, you're probably the one to do it. And yeah, probably Vonda had this. Uh, she had a, she was living in one of their houses in San Diego. Natural like stop on the way for Dean up north. Yeah, from uh, Mexico. Uh, from I guess it may be Utah at this point. I don't know. Mm. I don't oh, know if it's a coming natural from, stop. Someone's coming from. Maybe he's coming from Mexico. I don't there's know. nothing below San Diego except yeah, Mexico. Right, that's true. Or maybe he just doesn't know how geography works. Maybe or, Buenos Aires? Or maybe he had to... Caracas? I don't know, he might have had to pick up some stuff from the house. I don't remember. Hey, I got to pick up some stuff over yeah. on TJ. Uh, it's no big deal. Yeah. I got to shove I got to keister it. I got to head down to Quito. <laughs> 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 anyway, I can see your place, right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he gets to uh, Vonda White's house, and uh, she, uh, she says, Hey, uh, you know, before you leave... Um, the uh, the washer. Would you like to solve the puzzle? <laughs> <laughs> He's a real bad tonight. Uh, Sorry. No, no. <laughs> it works. <laughs> she goes, hey, though, the washer, that washer of mine, it's really been acting up. It's really it's a mess in there. And so Dean goes, you know, because these guys have been. What's her name? <laughs> <laughs> You need me to slap her around a little bit? <laughs> I have the same problem myself. Yeah. You know, I, I think it helps to just hit it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Slap it around a couple times. It'll start right off. A little elbow grease. <laughs> What's the name? It's good. It's on the fritz again, huh? <laughs> now, see, I, I don't know, I remember the exact time, but um, uh, to make money, the the uh, like Victor Chenoweth uh, had thought of the idea of... Uh, uh, the, like the group would have appliance stores, yeah, um, sure, and because they have all of these like kids that don't go to school that can't be seen by the public, not in school. Oh yeah, get them to move these refrigerators. Yeah, well, you, you just hide them in the fridge. Yeah, you, <laughs> you get them and you start up an appliance business. The women uh, do the deliveries. Uh, oh my oh, god, strapping into their back like some guy. Well, you get like four tank? or five of them. You know, I don't know. Uh, Where do you want this fucking thing? <laughs> Well, maybe one of the men would help with the delivery. I don't know. But the kids would, like, they'd be working, like, 16-hour days, like, fixing appliances, and they'd put cots in there so they could sleep in the back of the... Seriously? Lunch. Seriously, yeah. So this was a way that they made money, and, like, 80% of all the money made went straight to Irville. Of course. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, so uh, theoretically, Dean probably knew how to fix an appliance or two, you know? Uh, and so... Uh, so he goes, he starts working on the old... looking, Checking the washer. As he does this, Vonda goes upstairs... Uh, she opens up the top, the drawer of her dresser, vestibule, and uh, she uh, goes takes out a plastic bag with uh, with uh, surgical gloves and uh, some bullets that have already been uh, wiped down. Uh, oh, so no fingies prints yeah. on them. And then the gun that's already been wiped down. She fills up the gun with some bullets. Mm. Thou shalt not kill, <laughs> except <laughs> when convenient. <laughs> White glove delivery service of all Maytag appliances. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I don't know the exact time frame, but... Um, <laughs> if our service experts fail, we'll kill we'll Dean. Shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> if this washer doesn't work in 30 we'll kill days, the son of a bitch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or your money back <laughs> to Irville. <laughs> uh, she, and there, she had some kids in the house, and she told them uh, at some point in the day, I don't know who's at this point, that... Beat it, scram! That there's gonna be a commotion. You might hear a bang, and it's just. But don't just stay in your room and don't worry. Everything Chill is out. fine. Yeah, Chill out. You might hear a shot. What are you worried about? Um, and 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 uh, so so Dean, uh, uh, Vonda gets downstairs and he's about to leave, and she goes, "Well, wash your hands." And he's he's like, "I don't find anything wrong with the washer." So he goes, he washes his hands, uh, and as he's washing his hands, she pulls out the gun, and she would later say. Uh, uh, when she eventually did it, she said, Oh, it scared me to death. It scared me clear out of my mind. I didn't want to do it. I just didn't have the guts to do it. But then I remembered, it's a commandment. Do it. Mm. I just pulled out the thirty-eight. Then <sighs> she shoots him. As she shoots him, uh, 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 I don't think she hits him like near the liver or something, and blood starts spraying everywhere. He turns around to be like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> she shoots him a couple more times. Uh, and uh, uh, and then she she she, you know, uh, gets drops the gun and everything, and uh, and and calls the police and say there's been a shooting or something. The police show up, um, and they they look around the house and they find upstairs in her room like it's a surgical glove. They're like, ah, oh, that's a weird place for a 
Mm. Sing? Box of ammo. Uh, they eventually find uh, some blood on her shoe uh, and on her dress. And so immediately she's the suspect. Hmm. Uh, they take her in for questioning. So Dean bleeds out there. And, uh, he oh, Dean dies and bleeds? He, he dies. Yeah, he's dead. Thanks. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> and uh, they take her in for questioning. And the, the, the guy questioning her is like, he would later say like, she would just stare you straight in the eye and lie right to your face like it was the easiest thing in the world. Yeah. She would say, they would go, well, whose kids are those? And she'd go, oh, some guy Jack I met. I don't know him. I ever saw, never saw him again. And they already knew those were Irville's kids. Yeah. Uh, but they didn't have enough, like the DA wouldn't bring any charges against her because blood on her shoe wasn't enough. Um, and they even asked the kids, they're like, kids, you guys know who Irville is? And they all said, like, never met him. <laughs> Which might have been true, but probably <laughs> pro- <laughs> probably a lie. Like they don't, yeah, 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 yeah. So they say, but the cops say, hey, stay around in town just in case. And so, of course, she skips town that night. She's gone. Wow. But because of this case, the cops now start looking into her. And they, this, is, this might have been the first time American authorities uh, started to get a, a sense of the LeBaron family. Or, or that something, the, the Vonda White story is tied into mm. some people that seem. Yeah. And there, I mean, there's a rumor years and years and years ago that, uh, or I think there, someone years and years and years ago sent the FBI, like, uh, uh, a note that they thought someone in the LeBaron family killed John F. Kennedy. And then the FBI just, like, tucked it away. They're like, there's no way to, nothing, we can't do it. And so. What would that be about? I think someone. I think it's Ted Cruz. Ted they, I mean, they might have said, like, you know, Kennedy, you know, God, you know, God did that or something. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe they Dirty that. Catholic yeah. rum runner. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, Dean Vest is dead. Uh, it's a church is, um, church, Lamb of God church is uh, fifth murder in six months. Whoa. Uh, <sighs> the H is O. But uh, because of Vonda's, uh, uh, her job, uh, Irville says that she's now qualified for the celestial kingdom. Which is hey, like, the fa- you know, God really looked highly he, upon he the repays. murder that you perpetrated. Yeah. Plus, I mean, these washers. I mean, I mean flying off the shelves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, what what are you doing to sell these washes, you whore? Yeah. Uh, so okay, so you know, so uh, I I don't know if they they got Dean Salvage Barge, but they're, the church is making <sighs> some money from these appliance stores. Uh, they're still even then they're still they're running out houses in a few different cities. Dean, you're not selling your appliances. <laughs> 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 you haven't reached your quota of mm-hmm. wives and appliances. Mm, okay. uh, and uh, they Gotta move these microwave ovens. <laughs> <laughs> these refrigerators. <laughs> <laughs> Color TVs. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, they're, they're still living. You know, they're not making, they, like, the families aren't getting that much money, just enough to pay their rent. They're still doing what they call gardening, which is dumpster diving. Jeez. What? Yeah. And then, you know, it's like 15 kids to a house, four or five wives to a house. Uh, Dumpster diving. Yeah. <sighs> gardening, Aaron. It's gardening. Just tan into the garden. <laughs> so you think this is good? Ooh, what a bountiful harvest the Lord has blessed us with. <laughs> Some used condoms and half a drumstick. <laughs> That's going straight to Erfel, of course. <laughs> he gets the little bottom cone tip with the chocolate, of course. <laughs> I, I get to lick the wrapper <laughs> of the condom. Oh, my God. Oh, wow, that took a twist. So, uh, uh, but authorities start, they start spreading the word about, hey, you know, like, look look into this, uh, you know, these LeBaron folks. Uh, Erfel goes into hiding. Uh, then one day, him and his son, Andres, are spotted in Mexico. Uh, and they're re- arrested by the police for their attack on the... Uh, Los Molina City. Yeah, mm. that was fucking wild. Yeah, and it, 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 they they even they bring charges against him. They even have a court case. His mother even testifies against him. Jesus, saying like, I wrote him so many letters, being like, knock it off, <laughs> <laughs> stop murdering people. Yeah. This is your mother talking. <sighs> father, be back. wait till your father gets home. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody sit this thing to Irvin. <laughs> Very nice. like in that. time for Halloween. Right in time for Halloween. She has a horror. <laughs> Wink. Wink. Uh, but uh, uh, he is re- the judge releases him for lack of evidence. Mm. And uh, judge probably liked his wig style. 
<laughs> Pretty nice. This guy's got, got three, going on. four curls per side. <laughs> that really shows up like a yeah. Jerry curl. Yeah. yeah, he's wearing the fucking barrister wig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got two judges. Here. Oh, you too, huh? Oh, oh, we cool. have the same hairdresser. Oh, yeah. Weird. Huh? Weird. Anyways, uh, and uh, and Irville, uh, while in jail, he makes a proclamation that if he's in jail for longer than thirty days, that Mexico will be destroyed. Uh, he is released in twenty-two days. Uh, and probably, again, uh, Anderson speculates, uh, Scott Anderson, the author of uh, the book I use for sure. It's probably a bribe. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're pretty, mm. we're pretty sure it's a bribe. Yeah. The, the, uh, the sheriff of the town walked, was seen with 32 uh, <laughs> food dehydrators and a, a couple yeah. of microwaves. Uh, yeah. He's like, I'm going to stock this with garbage. New range hood. <laughs> I got a nice ship full of garbage coming in. That's right. You know, I'm, I'm half owner of a... Salvage barge. <laughs> it's mainly appliances. <laughs> it's mainly, yeah. Honestly, the seagulls on the rest. <laughs> they get all the good stuff first. Fucking birds, man. <laughs> Best gardeners there are, you know. <laughs> Constant gardener. Uh, in, uh, is there, now uh, that, that's near the end of 66 or maybe a little earlier than 77. Uh, in 77, uh, Irville's uh, 17-year-old daughter had been uh, a few Begging years... him to take her to Star Wars. <laughs> a few years <laughs> earlier, she had been married off to uh, Victor Chenoweth. And uh, Victor's wife, Nancy, just fucking hated her from oh. the beginning. And, uh, and Victor treated her poorly and it made her very depressed. And she started, like, overeating and stealing and... <sighs> Um, she became she became unhealthily overweight. Oh, and um, but it's a good way to get out of a marriage you don't want to be in. Well, eventually, with she, these people, she got pregnant, and mm. she thought, okay, well, if I have Victor's kid, like he'll have to like me then. Oh no. Um, but Victor's wife Nancy, uh, she you know she had told Rebecca's sister, uh, she said, "There's no way Nancy's gonna get that baby. That's my baby." So as soon as the as as soon as Rebecca had the baby, they took it from her and they gave it to Nancy. What the fuck? Yeah. Oh my god. And that only made Rebecca like more depressed. You don't say. Yeah. Yeah. And well, although she had been stealing. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Started eating a lot of baby. Well, sort of like you know, eye a, for an eye, huh? Sort of a karmic yeah. thing there. Yeah. Mm. You stole a washer. Mm. They get a baby. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and. Uh, so she starts getting worse, and then uh, she so they send her to another town just to like. Chill out, and she finds out the other town which she, that she is actually pregnant again with Victor's second baby. Fuck! And so she d she devises a plan where she's going to go back and get her kid, her other her first kid, and then run away to Mexico. Mm -hmm. And sound just the Irville. No, no, uh, he's now he's back in America. He's in the he, states. Okay, after he was acquitted and uh, or released for lack of evidence, and uh, she. She tells her father this, and he he says he says okay, I'll buy you a plane ticket. And uh, she on her way to the airport, she's never seen again. What? Along with the the child and baby in her belly, with the baby in her belly, but not the first child. Oh, got, it, got it, got it. And in the weeks leading up to this, in one of the appliance shops, um, someone had uh, rigged up a tent. And had practiced using it as cover, and another person in the shop had also been uh, studying rope tricks. Oh God! What in a fucking sit and sleep? Like just doing like Buffalo Bills? Wild well, no, 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 not so much that, but more how do you strangle somebody with a rope? Yeah, tricks? yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, yeah, not, yeah. Uh, and uh, she's never seen again. And Maybe they were Native Americans with the tents and the ropes. No. Yeah, yeah. No. 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 I mean, me? No. Me? No. No, they were white guys right. from... That was Bob's thing, too. Yeah. Bob's dead. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh... Okay, Kimasabi. <laughs> and, uh... There was a... I think it was uh, Lloyd Sullivan. I can't remember. It might have been. Uh, he said there was this weird moment where, uh... Irville drove his uh, car up, and he parked it next to me, and I, and he said... Uh, I said, uh, Irville... Uh, it seems like the back is hanging down a little bit. Oh. And Irvo goes, oh, it's probably my dead daughter in there. And then he opens up the trunk and he shows the guy. Well, it's, weird. it's a real wacky well, moment. Uh, and then her body was uh, never found. But he showed the guy a body yeah. of his dead daughter, mm -hmm. pregnant. Yep. Jesus, living Christ. Never just casually. What, so what, what, why, why does he want to kill his daughter? 
Because she was going to leave the family. Yeah. Well, like, when you kill them, they leave. They're yeah, gone. Then they're gone forever. Yeah. Yeah, but this way, if he does that, then she goes to the heaven. Oh, she goes to the ah, one, yeah, she yeah, goes yeah. to the great harem in the sky. Yeah. yeah, where he can fuck her probably, or a big old planet to her own. Yeah, 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 where he can mm. fuck her probably. I don't, don't know. Don't tell me he wouldn't. <laughs> Not Ervil. No, no, he would never dream of no. it. He's a good boy. Uh, and and so uh, <sighs> Ervil's on. He's uh, he must feel like he's on a roll now. Yeah. Uh, and so he says, "Fine, we're gonna kill Verlan." Uh, and so this time, there's this guy, Rulon Allred, who had uh, they had briefly uh, been involved with uh, when Joel's church was starting. Yeah, I remember that name. And uh, he was now a dentist in um, maybe uh, Utah. I can't remember. But uh, so they say, well, if we kill this guy, Verlan's going to go to that funeral. Yeah. There's no way he's missing the fucking... There's a lot of collateral damage planned here. Yeah. And uh, they take a... They- All from him saying, hey, man, I don't want no trouble. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, like he just said he didn't want trouble. Yeah, but it's like like we said in the first episode, everything is projection. Yeah, it's like if I said this, it means I'm coming with all guns blazing, right. baby. Yeah. yeah. So he gets it from his brother, and he's like, "Oh, it's like that, huh?" Yeah. Peace. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I'll show you peace, buddy. <laughs> yeah. I'll show you peace. Fucking, you know, say hello to my little peace. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, I'm the prince of peace. Look at my daughter, huh? I'm nuts. I don't even care. I'll kill her before I fuck her. You know what I'm saying? We'll do it. I'll fucking do it. And uh, they even put like they even put warnings on Rulon's car, being like, "Hey, man, park like, too close." <laughs> Signs are real simple, B. <laughs> but uh, they send uh, they send two uh, two death squads, uh, <laughs> and and uh, Re- Rena and another woman are sent to Rulon's uh, dental service. Mm. And they do this whole thing where they where one of the ways they cover their tracks is they. It's the it's the mid nineteen seventies, and so and also they have, they have like an auto salvage business, and so what they would do is they would steal the ignition system from like a seventy five Ford pickup, mm. and then if they saw another seventy five Ford pickup, they would steal it with the ignition system they had. Uh-huh. They would just replace the one in the stolen truck with theirs, then they could start it and drive off. Yeah, and then they could just still wearing their back braces from the appliance. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. doing yeah, all. Yeah, these women have learned like the intricacies of electronic ignition systems. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. Points and condensers, yeah. and they're just like, yeah. listen, if we if we if we just put the negative wire over here, mm-hmm. we can jump the relay. That yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, bypass the starter solenoid. Yeah, yeah. And therefore, we can just get the car going without ever needing a key. Yeah. And and great right. thinking, Martha. Yeah. Also, yeah. also. God tells dad everything. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't know any of this. Thank yeah. God. Wait, if only God told us all of this. We Man, didn't... I can't believe God said we got to kill this guy. <laughs> yeah. That's nuts. I'm scared of you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. Fears for pussies. <laughs> Jesus. You're not a pussy, are you, Margaret? No, Linda. <laughs> no. Get down and start munching. Oh, oh God. Jesus. <laughs> you keep going there tonight, dude. Yeah. We're driving a pickup truck. <laughs> 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 There's no Subarus. And so, <laughs> they, uh, so so Rena and another one they get uh, they you know get some wigs, uh, naturally, and they get natural uh, hair wigs. Yeah, maybe probably probably Great Indian hair, hundred yeah, percent Bangladeshi, baby. <laughs> Ooh, boy. And uh, and they they take they take one of these uh, stolen cars and they about four four forty five in the afternoon they <laughs> walk into the dental office. Where they uh, uh, basically they 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 basically walk into Rulon's office and shoot him, uh, and uh, they, and and they run out, and uh, and as they're running out, they they like get outside and they realize like oh we didn't shoot him in the f- head, yeah he might live fuck so so they uh, they start to coming back in this guy Richard Bunker is like. Like he's there, he said, there's this family that was there, like waiting for the to see the dentist, and they are just frozen. They haven't moved at all. They oh. just like completely shut down. Meanwhile, Richard sees what's happening, tries to close the door on him as they're coming back in. They shoot at him a bunch. He runs off. Then they they walk back into Rulon's office, uh, shoot him in the head. He had to get his whole family out of there, or did he leave them behind? It was no, it was just every him. man for himself. It was just it, he was he was just by himself, and then there was another family that was. Oh, just Oh, okay, like, okay, got it. They were waiting to get root canals. Yeah. I guess the root canal's not so bad after this. And uh, so the, the women uh, finish him off, and then they leave. Oh! Oh, God. You sicko. And uh, 
And uh, yeah, and, and you know, Richard's like, well, this was their hair color and blah blah. And so you know, they no one. <laughs> Like you know, and, and are you familiar with Cat Williams? <laughs> Same exact hair, <laughs> heavily processed. Yeah. R- Rulon had one of them had a mustache. <laughs> that white girl had a big giant afro. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Yeah, she might have been made Native American. Yeah. Long lost, and tribe. it was red as Hawaiian punch. <laughs> <laughs> Half is <as> sweet. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, and, you know, Rulon had already tipped off the FBI that uh, they might be coming after him because of the warnings they put on. So, so we're coming after you. So <laughs> don't tell no one <laughs> or else. And the one. So the, the heck, the second hit squad, uh, Zarina and the, uh, the one woman, they flee town now. The second hit squad is there in town for the funeral. Uh huh. And the funeral is very well attended with. R- police and reporters. Oh, God. It's pretty obvious what's happening. And the hit squad's all wearing trench coats and sunglasses and shit. Yeah, yeah. But the hit squad makes an executive decision that uh, they probably won't be able to kill Verlan. Dang it. Uh, without, you know, like they'll get killed before they can kill him. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. No uh, they, they skedaddle out of there. Yeah, yeah. And we it, got some uh, 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 microwaves to repair. Yeah. You gotta go. So sad. Sorry for your loss. Uh-huh. I have to go repair some v- VCRs. <laughs> <laughs> but in a in a you know in a, a a very lucky twist for the cops who have they you know they they have a pretty good sense of who did these these crimes, but like they they don't have any evidence. They don't have anything other than common sense. Yes. Yeah. Um. Except two days after, or a day after Rulon's death, these two guys are rummaging through a dumpster looking for aluminum cans. Now, are they gardeners? Or <laughs> are these just freelance? Uh, these are freelance. Hunter-gatherer types. <laughs> yeah, these, yeah, these are uh, 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 smiths. <laughs> yeah, free, freelance metal workers. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Excuse me, we are independent contractor metallurgists. <laughs> yes, yes. They uh, they find a bag. <laughs> Could you get all the swag at the bottom? They find a, this pa- this big old paper bag. In it is a reversible jacket, uh, <laughs> a receipt for a jack in the box, some live bullets, big wigs, some shell <laughs> casings, <laughs> reversible wigs, uh, some shell casings, and also four hand drawn maps to Rulon Allred's dental clinic. With a big X over it, probably. Yeah, and so the, the map quest with the toner fading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they got to replace the red. <laughs> it, ha- it has the starting point too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, uh, so using their slight left, <laughs> using the the Jack in the Box receipt, the cops figure out like, oh, where that Jack in the Box is. And then they follow the bullets back to someone who sold the bullets. Uh-oh. And the guy goes, oh, yeah. It's Jack. <laughs> yeah. And the reversible jacket, one of the non-reversible parts looks, or one of the, one of the sides looks like a jacket for one of the women was wearing. So, Members only. Uh, and again, like, they don't have, the, there's no DNA. They can do fingerprints. Yeah, DNA no, didn't exist. Yeah. Period. There's so, no DNA. Also, had DNA but before. like, what, what, what uh, you know, of the, of, of the steel workers down yeah, there by, yeah. by the dumpster? Are they going, they, what about this shit are they going, you got to see this? Yeah, you well, got, there's bullets. You got to call, and the, you gotta the, call the union boss. And the maps. Yeah. To, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. There and might there, be, there I, might be a map to more bullets. There was probably. Very treasure. There might have been like some reward. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah. For information. Yeah. So, I like to think that these guys go on a Goonies treasure hunt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they kind of were, but yeah, they, they, yeah, they, hey, you guys. <laughs> they find themselves at the crime. They're, they're at the crime scene. They're like, you are supposed to steal something. Yeah, yeah the body's still there. Yeah. They're this like messing, gar- they're up messing up there. With, they're messing that's with Mormon the, time. They're messing with the drill and stuff <laughs> down here. That's Gardner time. Down here's Gardner time. That's a good. That's very good, Aaron. And uh, um, it's so uh, down here. The 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 Magic is the, magic. the authorities uh, they um, they start building like the the who the LeBaron family is based on you know oh they got like a yarn board they're doing one of those things pictures on a wall yeah, and yeah. stuff giving everybody like a fucking a, 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 one of the cards in the deck of fifty two yeah 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 
Question uh, mark over Ervil, right? Question mark over Rebecca. <laughs> And then they and they 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 pick up this guy named uh, 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 Jack Strothman. He gets a Jack, and uh, and he was just like he was like a, a guy who'd been in and out of prison just forever, mm. and had found his way working with the Navy, the LeBarons, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and uh, um, Merchant Marines. And and when he got picked up, the, he told he saw the cops and he was like, "Jesus Christ, I'm glad to see you guys." I've been looking what? For all over. Yeah. I've been oh. doing the Navy. The Mar- I mean, I've been trying to find some police I mean, everywhere I go. I mean, I'm love, love a man in uniform. And so. I love a man of it, too. It was, he was a perfect guy to pick up, whether the cops knew it or not, because he actually had, uh, he knew about the, the mission in Utah. Uh, he knew about uh, the meeting in, in, in Dallas about it. He knew about the gathering in Evanston about it. The, he knew where the hit teams were going. He'd been in oh. and all of these missions. All that shit. He knew about the aborted plan to attack the funeral. I and mean, that's the only thing that those good folks would abort. That's right, Aaron. And, and also they, they, uh, they picked up uh, Isaac LeBaron, who was, uh, he was like 12 or 13-year-old son, mm. who had also uh, been present for some of these meetings. Sure, and, I was and, there. And he agreed to, to speak. And be, with the combination of these two guys, they were able to arrest... Um, uh, uh, well, they, so they, they put out warrants for Ervil, uh, six members of the Chenoweth family, and uh, th- three other people, and five of Ervil's wives. And uh, for, for as, uh, as, as Anderson knows, notes in Rena Chenoweth's uh, a sheet about her, the police listed her crimes as bad checks, murder. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. She's... Bad checks? She writes bad checks. I mean, you can understand murder is a crime of passion, but... Going back on your word? I know, yes. Uh, so in 1977, September Enough. 23rd, uh, 100 officers over Utah, Texas, Colorado, and Oklahoma with the FBI and Secret Service working together. They raided, what? They raided two- Because t- of JFK? <laughs> <laughs> Bad check. Plus, I heard she also killed JFK. No. Why the fuck is the Secret Service there? Well, because they, this, this is, I don't know, they do stuff like this. I don't know. Do they? I don't know. All right, all right. To be continued, we'll look into that. Yeah, well, that's that's interesting to me. Yeah. Hmm. Perhaps we'll ask uh, Maddie. <laughs> yeah. What's uh, up with you? Do, do hmm. the Secret Service do stuff like this? <laughs> yeah. It's not really a Mormon question, but uh, yeah, it is. Your, your opinion is welcome. Thank you. They uh, they raided over two dozen of the cult houses and businesses, and they were able to arrest uh, four people. Plus, they found a couple. Four of, people. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> they found. And plus, they found a couple of. Cool vintage toasters. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She, my, my wife is gonna love this. It's got space for bagel. Yeah, leading some twelve-year-old girl out with a back brace. <laughs> Whoever sold you those suits had a great sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they, they also they but they one they uh, but they had warrants out for, for so many people. One of them was this guy Lloyd Sullivan. And so after this went down, Lloyd Sullivan got a lawyer and he turned himself in. Um, <coughs> Uh, and he had been he had been in the meeting specifically for four people who were called for atonement. So he had first person knowledge of four specific murders, and he became a key witness. Uh, he discussed one time he was with Von De White, uh, and they discussed. This was after she murdered Dean Vest. They discussed the killing, mm. and she told him details that. Only the killer would know about, like, <laughs> there was a separate wash basin that he was washing up in. Because yeah. I told him to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I sent him into a spin cycle. And uh, he even recounted a, uh, a funny anecdote about Ervil. You know, I'll tell you something funny about Ervil. Is when he, when, when... he orders up murder like you and I order up hot wings, friend. <laughs> uh, it, uh, he, he said uh, he said that uh, Vonda was... Uh, um, she was uh, cleaning fish uh, while they were talking, and uh, one of the fish was a catfish. Mm. And uh, oh. there's there's a there's a there's a cult taboo against eating fish without scales or fins. Mm-hmm. And uh, so she was gonna throw the catfish away, and Irville saw that. Don't and he that. he became really angry, and he yelled, "Who is so fanatic that they would throw a catfish away?" Wow! Yeah. Why? How did it get home? 
Well, like, the, dumb, you... the dumpster is unforgiving. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They found it underneath in a fucking Nike shoebox. Yeah. Hey, this is a catfish. Bring it home. See what mom thinks. Oh, no, 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 no. That's a filthy yeah. animal. It doesn't have scales. Yeah. Never mind it was in a shoebox. Well, box. yeah. We can at least cut his mustache off and keep that for the next time we do a murder. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm here for my appointment. <laughs> These ladies smelled like shit. <laughs> <laughs> we were catfish. <laughs> they were who they said they were. <laughs> There's also a rumor that maybe Lloyd Sullivan tur- uh, turned himself in and, and turned on Irville because uh, he had uh, been sleeping with uh, Rena Chenoweth. Oh! Nice. She was up upwards of seventeen and a half by now. She but, got uh, she got around Rena. But Rena Rena said it did not happen. She said uh, I had seriously considered what it might be like to being married to him, but as far as going to bed with him, I never did. I was raised on the Ten Commandments and taught that adultery is a very serious crime. Oh yeah, says a woman who shot a man to death. Yeah, yeah. Just well, the, I think they said that was Vonda. This is Rena. This is Rena Vonda. Also, Rena shot Rulon Ulrich. Oh yeah, Vonda yes. shot Dean. I know it's hard to keep up. There's a lot of Shootings and, and people hypocrisy and, yeah. and Chenoweths, what have you. Uh, so, so Lloyd Sullivan, he was key witness, and they arrested Vonda White, and uh, and he was a key witness in her case. And then uh, on on May twenty fifth, nineteen seventy eight, uh, he before he could testify, he died of a heart attack. <sighs> Lloyd? Yeah. Oh, fuck. And they threw out the case on Vonda White because they didn't have... Oh, my God. What oh, about Tiny Isaac? He wasn't there for the murder. Tiny Isaac. Or he, or he didn't discuss... He didn't discuss that, like, Lloyd Sullivan had discussed... She told him that she killed he him. He died of a fucking heart attack. So does Isaac have to go home after that? No, so Isaac stays in police custody. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, by the end of... Put him in a nice penthouse and shit, probably. <laughs> Serving up catfish every night. Yeah, yeah. And as, as all of this is happening... Irville is still on the run, and in 1978, the Mexican p- police catch him. Huh. But they get, he's with Dan, this guy, Daniel Ben Jordan, who was his like number two guy, one of his like super evil Th- entrants. Oh, three first names? Is he a fucking serial killer? I'm Daniel Ben Jordan. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, he was <laughs> one of like I'll, I'll the OG <laughs> Irville followers. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but Daniel Ben Jordan has been listed as missing for. Like five or six years now. But listen, man, Daniel Ben Jordan around. You know, <laughs> Daniel Ben Jordan. And so, the, so the 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 cops don't in Mexico don't realize who he is. Who's that guy? And they just let him. They just let him go. Get out of here. Whatever your name is, <laughs> Gringo. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I th- I think they let them both go actually. Because they just they they get the all of the identities mixed. They're so up. baffled by this guy's you three know, names. It's better the cartels are running things now. <laughs> Organized, principled, <laughs> efficient. By, by the end of 1979, uh, courts in Utah and California handed down 40 <laughs> indictments on 12 cult members, 18 indictments made to, uh, made, uh, 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 brought to trial, 18 indictments made it to trial for five people. Mm-hmm. No, not a single one resulted in conviction. Um, eventually, Vonda White had a second trial and she was found guilty and sentenced to life in prison. And uh, Did she testify against God. <laughs> That's the big fish we're trying to get here, right? Yeah, yeah. Catfish. Yeah, they are. Can I say Jack? <laughs> and on June first, nineteen seventy nine, uh the, the American authority the police had been paying Mexican police under the table to do like extra work. And they eventually did catch Erfel. And he was extradited to the United States. And uh, the trial took two weeks, the verdict took three hours. And for the murder of Rulon Allred, he was found guilty of first degree murder. The charge of conspiracy to commit murder, he was also found guilty. He was given life in prison. Not Damn. atonement or nothing like that. Well, that time hasn't come yet. Uh, <laughs> let's take a let's take a little break. Oh man, a little catfish break. Yeah, mm-hmm. let's go, let's go get up. We're bread and fried up. Maybe some crab apples. Uh, uh, crayfish. Yes. All right, folks. We'll be right back. And we're back. Hey, all right. Hey. Now, Orville went to jail. Yeah. Finally. Yeah, prison. You, you want to read that? Did uh, he mean Ernest? <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. he was in jail? He was scared stupid. <laughs> oh, man. And then he had to go to camp. Don't ask which one. <laughs> camp was the first. Yeah. That's a good one. 
Now's now the time to. Then he saved Christmas, I believe. He did. Yeah. Now, well, ba Maddie, back to you in the studio. <laughs> Okay, I, I would I would say just leave out the specific uh, relative type. Just say a relative. Oh, okay. Update, gentlemen. Apparently, me. Apparently, my relative type. <laughs> so now this is the update from Maddie. Yeah, from yes. the beginning of the episode. Yeah. yeah. Uh, apparently, my relative type <laughs> was the CEO who watched over Irvil when he was in that Utah State jail. Said he was batshit and had an evil energy. On the other hand, when he met Ted Bundy, he said Ted was a super normal guy who, and you'd never suspect him. Well, that's why Ted got away for so long. You know, Irvil. That's why he's the goat. See? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, um, yeah. so Ir Irvil, he's given uh, life in prison. Uh, uh, Rena Chenoweth, uh, she divorces him. Oh, wow. Now, Ted uh, Bundy, he got married there. Yeah. Uh, she, she, she writes, she wrote him uh, this letter. Um, uh, she wrote, I intend to divorce you. I don't love you the way a wife should love her husband, and I never will. I learned a lot from you, but now I want to marry someone I can love, admire, and respect, and who, who will return those feelings. I'm sorry if this hurts you, but for me, it's like being released from a prison. Ooh. <laughs> mm. And she's in prison. No. No. He is. He oh, is. why isn't she in prison? Uh, Lack of evidence? Yeah. Wow. Damn. He's, meanwhile, he's, he's, uh, did, did Ervil... Personally kill anyone? Not a single person. He's like Charles Manson. I mean, and, and almost every time... Charles Manson actually killed one guy. Oh, almost every time he uh, he sent people out to kill people, he then like drove off. Yeah. Like, the opposite direction. I, I got a boogie. Yeah, like, <laughs> God, say, God says I'm needed uh, there. Listen, man, yeah. I got ten wives. Imagine. Yeah. God. So, uh... uh <laughs> but Irville, Ir um... He, uh... He didn't handle prison well. Wow. Yeah. Uh, he would stay awake for three or four days at a stretch, uh, orating to other. This is from Anderson. He would stay awake uh, for three or four days at a stretch. He, he didn't write, uh, I, that was me. Uh, orating to other inmates or animately talking to himself while pacing. He received revelation, revelations that, just as with the walls of Jericho, God would soon cause the walls of the point of the mountains to crumble, mm. allowing his prophet to step out into the sunlight. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Uh, he uh, he also engaged a lot of self destruction. Uh, he w one time he tr attempted to drown himself uh, in the cell toilet. Uh, another time he petitioned the prison. But he had warden. to stop because it was a full it was full of toilet wine. He was like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> "I'm a Mormon. <laughs> Who made wine in this toilet that I'm trying to kill myself in? I'm not trying to fucking go to hell <laughs> with alcohol." Uh, he he asked the uh, the prison warden uh, for permission to be executed. The warden asked if this was over the the mur like if he had remorse remorse for the murders he uh, he, he he had ordered and Irvil said no absolutely not I would like to be executed because I had been masturbating in my cell oh which is which is a, the only thing that's gonna stop me is I mean that's a sin because it's not blood atonement of course not yeah. a, it's a not atonement it's not it oh god yeah. <laughs> uh, so the, the it's hell in a cell <laughs> is not atonement. But uh, so so he. Um, it's not a tone log either. <laughs> Yo, it's it's wild. No, oh, I can't believe he was jacking it in that cell. Oh, man. So I, I think he was, he was in prison for for almost two years, uh, and then August sixteenth, nineteen eighty one, he's found dead in his cell. Mm. He's uh, he's fifty six years old, and uh, some people believe it was um, the suicide. Huh. But uh, Anderson, uh, Scott Anderson, in his book, uh, he says... In Blood Prophet? Uh, no, this is uh, the... I'm not going to read the title yet, because it, oh. it will come up. Got it. Um, he says, uh, medical, medical, medical examiners arrived at a simple explanation for... Because he had bruising on his neck, so people thought that he choked himself to death. But uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, medical, uh, uh, med medical examinators arrived at a simple explanation for the bruising. As is common with victims of seizure... Irville inst instinctively grabbed at his throat at the moment of the seizure in reaction to either the pain or inability to breathe. At death, blood, blood settled at the pressure spots, resulting in a post-mortem bruising. Uh-huh. So there was thoughts either he committed suicide by choking himself or someone had killed him. Yeah. But he probably just had a seizure. Right. And, uh, There's also and that, you know, third way. Uh, yeah. 
He, you on the he, same page he, as me? He came. Yeah, he, someone he, he, he jacked it to yeah, death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 ja- yeah. Ja- 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 jack and choke. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it kind of resolves all of his issues. Yeah. Like I'm in this cell. I'm jerking off. I wish I was executed. Yeah, he orders up mm-hmm. a jack and choke. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Making a double. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny you say that, Aaron, because two days after, wait, say what? Making a double. Two days after Irville died. Uh oh. Verland died in a car crash. Oh. And in Mexico. What? what do you have a seizure? No, no foul play was suspected. He just had a car crash and died. Just a bad driver. The guy Irville had been trying to kill all along. Turns out he just had to had die. to die first. And so that would end the Irville LeBaron story. <coughs> but it's not over yet. <sighs> he comes back to life. Right? Well, so he's risen. While in jail, he writes a uh, 400-page tome called The Book of New Covenants. And in it, he lists 20 people that he thinks should die. Cool. Yeah. Four, uh, Come on down. 20 pages a person. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, 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 do you remember what I said in the, the first episode about the how bad his writing was? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah oh, yeah, this yeah. is going to be good. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't have... I'm not going to... Fuck, fuck, fuck. Uh... I, there are very, he gave the copies to, I believe it was a man named, uh, a man that he be, he became friends with, uh, Leo Ivaniak, who, um, who, uh, who he became uh, really good friends with and, and Leo, um, uh, uh, took the pages and, uh, typed them up and, and handed them out, uh, to, to various members and you can't, various members of, of the, Church of the Lamb. Ah, he he was not like an inmate. No, no, no. no. Friends were out when they were got it, and uh, and 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 uh, because he became so friendly with Irvil while Irvil was in jail, Irvil actually uh, gave him. Uh, I don't know if it's one of his daughters, but you know he allowed him to marry somebody in one of his family. And um, and so I I looked it up. I could not find any um, copies of this. There are still copies reportedly around, owned by people. You know, involved in yeah, but but they're still they, trying to get these sorry motherfuckers. They, they haven't they haven't been published online as far as I've found. But well, hey, that'd be know. a good way for them to get got. Uh-huh. Um, and so that brings us to the next part of the story, which is, um, is he sending these people like on crusades from beyond the grave? So there's a there's an exchange between Irville and and Richard Forbes, who's um, one of the one of the cops in. When they're, they're, they're doing their interrogation. And Irvil says to me, he says, most of you don't know that different types of criminality in parents are of a hereditary nature that children have, a very great tendency to follow. And Forbes says... I got uh, a lot of kids. Forbes says to him, uh, a, a scientific study was conducted regarding that? And Irvil replies, I done it myself. Mm. And so uh, there is a, a little bit of a... A battle. So, so next in line after Irville dies is is his son Aturo, and um, Aturo makes the the claim. Aturo is has been you know riding around with with Irville for you know about a little over twenty years now, maybe twenty five years. Mm, yeah. Probably seen some shit. Yeah, and, shotgun little buddy. And uh, he's a pretty brutal guy. Oh, and uh, one of his uh, his his sister moms, uh, Lena Lorna Chenoweth. Um, she wants to leave, so he has her killed. Fuck. Uh, her body has never been found. Um, and it was nice, too, you know? But, oh, God. But Leo Ivaniuk also has, he, he believes that he's suppo- supposed to take over. Yeah. Uh, and, and, he, and I think he even claims that Irville said that he should. Yeah. And so him and Arturo have a fight back and forth, and it becomes, a, you know, they start trying to shoot, e- like ambush each other. Oh, they didn't just have a, <laughs> yeah, a it wasn't just in tongues fight? Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, Leo, are you going to be at church? Because, uh, you know, that's important for us. Kind of a big deal, dude. Think you're going to be there? Think you're going to make it? Yeah, are you going to be at your sister mom's funeral? going to be in the <laughs> pew, pew, pew. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. Okay. Pretty nice. I like that. Uh, and so Leo sets up... Um, an ambush, and, and Arturo was called to meet with uh, these two brothers at their house, and when he arrives, uh, Arturo just, like, he gets out of his truck, 
he sees immediately what's going to happen. He runs back to his truck, and he's just riddled with bullets, and he, and he dies. And Leo then, instead of taking over, Leo actually just leaves and doesn't take over the, the reins. Because wow. He doesn't like this murder business. Because after a turret it falls to the next uh, son, Heber. And he's a real son of a bitch, huh? Yeah. Heber. Is he really? Yeah. Oh, he got he got the Heber Jeebers. <laughs> when he skipped town. I I don't I don't I don't remember uh, I'm getting out of here. I can't take Heber. I think he, he What the fuck are these names, by the way? I mean Arturo is a name. Arturo. Arturo, which is Spanish for Arthur. Arturo. Yeah, yeah. That, that's but a, you said Arturo. Yeah, well he's pronouncing it wrong. No, I thought I said Arturo. Oh, uh, okay. Then maybe I skipped over the R. Yeah. No, I'm Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Yeah. <laughs> and next came Arturo. <laughs> King Arthur. Mike McGuire. King Arthur with the sad and the stone kid. <laughs> <laughs> it was wicked stuck in there. <laughs> but Melon. Melon? Oh, boy, with a bed. <laughs> so fucking tough. Melon with the bed? Oh, fucking hell, kid. All right. Okay, so, but but we can, we can agree Heber. Heber is just stupid. Well, I mean, there's a lot, like, I think a lot, these are just Kurt Vonnegut character names where it's just the sound. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're like, yeah. well, it's, yeah, the, the, you're, you're named after the first sound we heard mm. when right. you came out. Well, there's probably like a Hebrew thing. Sure. Yeah. But there's a lot of Daniels and there mm-hmm. was, uh, Rulon I've heard before. Yes. I've heard Ur- of Rulon. Ervil and Verland. I mean, I think I've heard of Verland. I've heard, that sounds like it could, yeah, I don't know. Ervil, but, you know. Sounds like their parents were having a stroke when they named it. Yeah, yeah. Ervil! <laughs> yeah. yeah, it sounds like they got asked on this. They hadn't thought of a name. They're like, it's, that's my son, Verland. <laughs> he, brr. Did you say Verland? Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And what's your name? What? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's a... What ain't no person I ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> they speak Hebrew and what? Ervil's on first? <laughs> Doesn't make it easy. Uh, so Heber takes over. He's he's 20. He's oh. now in charge of the Church of the L- Lamb. 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 Yeah. Schweidermann. Uh, he's, he's, he's 20. <laughs> Uh, he's a of the Egiro. <laughs> Egiro is like the fourth kid. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want him taking over. <laughs> that guy's nuts. <laughs> it's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> you like that, Matt? Yeah, it's very good. It's <laughs> very good. You like the juice? <laughs> you like the juice, huh? Juice. juice is very good. I get you more juice. Uh, he was 20. He takes over, and uh, uh, one of his first acts is he goes back to the ambush site, and everybody's like, oh, fuck, he's going to, like, fucking kill us. And he goes, no, 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 I want to, none of that. We just want to, I, I come here in peace. We'll, uh, what, is everybody still there? Well, the two brothers are still there uh, with with uh, these two uh, sisters. Who probably, I think one of them, is, one each is their wife or something. I, I don't know exact, exactly. But it gets, uh, gets messy. It's a good guess. Uh, and they have kids there too, and uh, some of them are wives. And Arturo, uh, he's just there in peace, uh, and he and he start he talks to the kids, and uh, apparently, according to him, and the, uh, he says that the kids told him that one of the moms said, "Hey, um, get into the camper, uh, just just in case, so you're safe." And so Heber interprets this as, oh, it turns out there was an ambush plant. Because like, you know, they had been telling him, like, no, this wasn't an ambush. Like, hmm. like we didn't have anything to do with it. Leo just showed up and killed Arturo. Right. But why would they be told to get in the camper, right. of course? It was and the so, kids, man. Oh, that's what, so Heber says, oh, okay. So he, uh, he, he, he brings it, like, he's sitting with the two brothers one day. And he tells them this story. Then he just stands up and shoots one of them in the head. Oh my god! Who? One of the brothers. Oh. And he tells Heber? the other. He tells. Heber shoots one of the brothers. One of those two guys. You know? Yeah. And then he tells. He goes to the other one. He goes clean that up. Yeah. Uh, fucking. It's a mess. One. One of the women runs away. Uh, the other one, he basically enslaves and tortures over the span of six months. One of Good the. Good God. One of the 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 women who uh-huh. were involved. One. So one of them runs away. The other one doesn't. 
she doesn't leave in time, and uh, he yeah, slaves and tortures her for the you know for months on end. Oh my and then God. eventually they like bring her to this like room, this like where she stands in front of like four guys, professes her innocence, uh, and uh, then uh, then fill in the blanks. Yeah, uh, her name is Yolanda, uh, and her body has never been found. Uh, the one sister who re- did run away, she was eventually discovered in a mental institution. Uh, and then in the middle of the night, one night, she disappeared. Damn. And uh, Heber, much like uh, uh, Irville with, with Daniel Ben Jordan, he's found a, a very powerful, uh, you know, mentally deranged number two man mm-hmm. to, uh, to do. Jake, Jake John Jarrett? Yeah, to do his. <laughs> <laughs> My number two man's the shit. <laughs> he can do the work of three men. <laughs> Takes big shit. You know? It's basically a six. Uh, and uh, th- th- this was uh, his younger brother named Andrew. Um, and this is... Uh, it's uh, my brother's name. Hey! This is a quote from a, a Texas lawman who uh, uses a pseudonym. Walker? Uh, <laughs> no, Walker would never use a pseudonym. Walker told me I have AIDS. <laughs> well, if you saw that episode about his son having AIDS, then you'd know that's not a big deal in that family. What? Oh, you saw the, you saw an episode of Walker Texas Ranger? Well, it was, it was a clip from that's what I'm when, talking about. When Walker Con- told me I have AIDS. When Conan, that's, had- what, that's what I was referencing. Oh, okay. Yeah, with, yeah. it was Haley Joel Osment. Another thing yeah. named fucking weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> there's Walker, a whole, there's, Walker told me I have AIDS. There's a, well, there's a clip where like a fa- down. They're they're having a birthday party and this like and and it, of course this family that drives up and Walker has Haley Joel Osment his, his child and the woman he's with they walk out to meet the family and the the father of and the, I think like Wilford Brimley's in it yeah he's yeah like, like, or I'll call you Tinko or Little Chief and he's like. <laughs> Walker told me I have AIDS. Huh. Yeah, that, that ain't shit compared to diabetes, kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got it off lucky. It's not, the li- it's not the death sense it used to be. That is the life. Eat your oatmeal. But the, the, but the dad, the dad brings his, his daughter and his wife up, and 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 the dad he's had hat in hand, and he goes, you know, uh, we weren't gonna bring her here to the birthday, and then the girl pipes up. She goes, I told him that he we can't get AIDS from being around someone with it. And they're like, oh, 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 all right. Well, you can have your own class. You can have your own, you know, solo cup. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, classic they Walker. Keep him away from the keg. <laughs> yeah. Don't look like you near that fucking keg with that solo cup. <laughs> Dude, he's back washing into the keg. <laughs> Why do we let him do a keg stand? Oh, God. In a butt? <laughs> Jesus, Walker. Kid butt, Chuck. So, uh, so a second in line from Heber was his, his younger brother Andrew. Here's what the uh, Texas law, the lawman. Uh, his, this is his description of Andrew. Andrew was an absolute fuck. <laughs> He's a Texas lawman. He doesn't mince words. A stone cold psychopathic killer with absolutely no conscience whatsoever. Damn. Uh, after that was uh, um, uh, end of story. Lorna Tana with uh, a younger son Aaron, better known as Mo. That's uh, my name. <laughs> Mo? Aaron. Aaron. Uh, I know. Uh, he, was, uh, he was the soft-hearted one in the family. Uh, I think one of his... Uh, uh, yeah, that's me. We all just get along. It seemed like there was, a, a, according to, this is from a, pl- a Phoenix policewoman, Patty Reardon, who would eventually be investigating all of this. According to some people who talked to him, it seemed like there was something wrong mentally. Like, he was told what to do and he'd do it. Almost seemed like an idiot. But maybe that's the impression he wanted to give. Uh, and so what Heber did... Um, I don't know much. Other than, you know... I know I love you. According, uh, of course, like, you know, the murder he kept up with, but he changed the hierarchy of the family in, in a certain way where um, uh, Andrew would look after the kids. Like, so they get all, like, get the kids somewhere, and Andrew would look after the kids. Hmm. And then the, 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 someone... Y'all got learn today. There would be um, uh, uh, the matriarch, Linda, May, Linda Ray Johnson, uh, her and... and uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got a dude's name in there. Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> Linda Ray. I think that name comes with a scope <laughs> <laughs> and a bolt action. <laughs> Linda Ray Johnson. <laughs> so she, she, she was the only one with any uh, 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 college experience. She had she took two years of uh, secretarial school. Yeah, the Texas School Book Depository. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so she was in charge of the books, but then over uh, there in Dealey Plaza. Or, uh, <laughs> But then, uh, uh, eighteen-year-old Patricia, she took care of all 
the female operatives in the family. Operatives. Female operatives. Yeah. And uh, Heber, Heber, what he did is he turned this family from like a religious cult into more of like a mafia. Nice. Yeah. Sounds like a paramilitary organization when you say operatives. Yeah, yeah. yeah. These ladies ain't doing opera, fella. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and he he. They're not answering phones. <laughs> Hello, operative. Operatives are standing by. <laughs> call now or don't. <laughs> we'll call you. So he started running like uh, he started uh, running like uh, uh, chop shops with cars. And, it up. Uh, and uh, in order to gain favor with the Mexican officials, he would pimp out his sisters to them. Damn. Oh, my God. And uh, now this is getting juice. <laughs> <laughs> and I like the juice. <laughs> juice is very good. And uh, he uh, he took as many wives as he could, including four of his half sisters. Huh. Oh, wow. And not all enthusiasm, uh, enthusiasm anymore, guys. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm speechless. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm hard, and all the blood has rushed to my groin area. Honestly, they're only half. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Even in the family, I, I, I guess. guess. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe I'd be more be enthused in. if they were just full sisters. Yeah. I mean, mix it up a little bit, Matt. Come on, dude. Come on. But if you take two half sisters, they equal one full that's sister. That's right. That's right. And then you could pimp them out. <laughs> Earn double. Uh, but he he was um, got us working in shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he again like he's twenty, he's all over the place too. Mm. Uh, uh, he and he's a LeBaron. Yeah, and this is what you know, like eighty two, eighty three, around eighty three or so. Mm. Uh, Good year. And he uh, you said it, neighbor. He was even more brutal than Irville. Like if you if you if you to gave Irville any shit, like. You could probably apologize, and he'd let you. He'd like let you off the hook. Mm -hmm. But if you did, like, gave Hebrew even just like a, a side eye, he, you would get a beating. Damn. Uh, yeah, he's got. He's he's full of testosterone. Yeah. Uh, according to Anderson, on one occasion, he's reported to have approached strangers in Nogales, Mexico, New Mexico. Nogales. Uh, yeah. Oh, just south of the border of Tucson. Uh, oh, well, in New Mexico, and offered to hire himself out as a hitman. Just you know. A thing you do hey just man, to stay low. I know we've had a couple of uh, mezcal shots together, but like, if you need me to kill somebody, you know, yeah, dude, like wait, for me, plus you can fuck one of my sisters. Like yeah. <laughs> I already have. <laughs> I have uh, on good authority. Number three is number one. It 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 uh, here's a here's a uh, I think three. A, a pretty good, like three of the sisters. Number three, I don't got it, got it, got it, got uh, it. This this is from uh, Scott Anderson. His dictates were often capricious and silly. For several years, the cult largely existed on fast food and pizza. But when the sickly Aaron turned him on to organic food and health care, Heber initiated a policy of mandatory 36-hour fasts and put everybody on a strict and unbalanced diet of natural foods and vitamin supplements. Mm. He was also far more overt about his sex drive than his father had been. At least two former cult members recall riding in a pickup cab through the Mexican countryside while Heber lay in the back having sex with several of his half-sisters. Several. Oh, damn. He's 20. Dude, I mean, uh, you don't have to defend it. No, I'm not. I'm not defending it. I'm just yeah. saying. I think it's funny that he started man. taking nutrition advice from his sickly younger brother. Yeah. Well, he probably, like, you know, You're doing maybe it got all better. wrong. <laughs> I know you all are high on the hog and fat, rosy cheeks eating that fast food. Yeah. I you, love a stuffed crust pizza. You gotta have <laughs> some, <laughs> some steamed asparagus <laughs> and brown rice. <laughs> and then mm, what you're going to Sounds have, great. Yeah. Then you want to take a big old pill of iron, mm -hmm. and that's gonna feel good in your stomach. Wash it down with some milk of magnesia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> take a big old shit in the pickup truck while you're mid coitus with two of your half siblings, <laughs> like God intended. Uh, so, so Heber was a uh, pretty brutal. Um, at, at one point, Andrew uh, he meets this sixteen-year-old. And uh, she falls in love with him. Damn. And he uh, uh, he convinces. Know, was that some <laughs> Thorazine mixed in the fucking? Well, you seven know, up? Like, you know, like these tall LeBarons, You know, like you know, they're so tall. They're tall. Uh, he, and and he convinces her to come down to the you know one of the ranches, and she gets there and immediately put to work, and so she <laughs> she she flees, and I don't know how to fix this dryer, sir. She flees back home, and and Andrew uh, then he he calls her up, and he's like, I'm so sorry, and she's like, Okay, like if you want to be with me, you can't enslave me. You can't be with that family. Mm -hmm. Ooh. And uh, then, and he took the, he took this as a declaration of war. <laughs> well, a few days later, uh, Heber calls the woman and said, uh, "says uh, Andrew's not going to make it. We don't know where he is." Wait, who calls Heber? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. He's going to be tied up. And I don't think Andrew's uh, body has ever been found. 
Damn. Or Andrew's ever been found. So maybe he ran away. He could be but probably re- not. relaxing on a tropical island somewhere. Yeah. Spin cycle. Uh, like <laughs> likely either he asked Heber for permission to leave, or he didn't, and Heber found out. Heber was just listening, jerking off in the back of the cab. It could have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, wrong number. Click. Um, uh, but uh, uh, Andrew, Andrew, uh, presumably dying, uh, uh, hurt morale. Oh. Yeah. And so to raise morale, Heber uh, decided to rob a bank. Hey, everyone. Hey. We're all going to rob a bank. <laughs> uh, and so he. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, well, first of all, let me fuck a couple of my sisters. <laughs> you guys still got those catfish mustaches? <laughs> <laughs> all right. You're going to have to turn those wigs inside out. and. Uh, <laughs> Try to keep up. Watch me for the changes. <laughs> <laughs> well, he does it by himself. He goes into his savings and loan. But he plays four different characters like Eddie Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> he probably had fucking Andrew doing some fucking Weekend to Bernie shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's Raggedy this Andy. Is raggedy, raggedy Andy in there. <laughs> he, 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 he does it as himself uh, uh, in Richardson, uh, Texas, 15 miles north of Dallas. Uh, he goes in. He uh, demands money. Uh, points out of uh, points of forty five automatic at the teller. Uh, they uh, probably semi automatic. The teller trips the silence alarm and the silent alarm. And uh, get, but you know, and uh, puts a die packet in the money bag. He gets out of the <laughs> bank. Die packet explodes. No. Uh, he starts uh, running off. Isn't it so bad? I want him to win now that he's robbing a bank. Yeah. <laughs> What's it's it? probably a credit union, locally owned. Saving savings alone. Oh. Uh, he 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 starts running across a mall parking lot. Uh, he uh, he he uh, is is cornered by the cops. He's turned he, so he turns around. He takes his. 45. I didn't even do anything. <laughs> he uh, he 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 goes to switch off the safety, but instead he uh, lets the clip out of the gun. Oh my god! We still got one in the chamber. And uh, as he goes to pick up the ammo, the cop uh, just points the gun at him and says, "If you pick it up, you're dead." Uh, crazy for this. You, I mean, you never expect like. Whoops! Uh, you know the police officer just to to unload on a guy to, to no to, to to not unload to, on. To, on to, oh it's yeah, so, yeah, it's so it's so weird. I could, I could only imagine what stopped the cop from doing it. Well, in fairness, the guy he was on arm technically. I guess. Yeah. yeah, the guy yeah. went. Listen, since you're covered in that indigo paint, I don't know what race you are. <laughs> so I'm gonna let <laughs> you I'm slide. I'm not gonna risk it. I'm gonna <laughs> let you slide this time. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm assuming uh, you know. I'm uh, gonna blue re- lives matter I'm, here. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm going to reach for my, my better angels and assume you're a simple smurf. <laughs> Who I don't have a problem with yet. Uh, sir, he's technically blue. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? Thin blue line. Permission Her. to deputize, sir? <laughs> Can I give him my gun? <laughs> he has offered me two half-sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, he's replaced the ignition. And is <laughs> he is all he is? He is Oscar Mike. He is Oscar Mike, and no, that is not one of his brothers. <laughs> Oscar uh, Mike, uh, uh, <laughs> pretty good. I'd pat myself and you and you on your backs. Uh, so he he's arrested, but. Um... Uh, they 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 beat him up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Even black and blue and yeah, blue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the the uh, the officer said he had a he had a fall. He tripped. Uh, but what, but they bring him into jail, and he doesn't have any ID. They don't know who he is. Yeah, these guys are feral out there, baby. Yeah. And so I'm off the grid. He he the the they arrest him. Uh, he's arraigned as William Samuel Harrison, aggravated robbery, bail set at fifty thousand dollars. Uh, three weeks later, um, Linda Ray, one of his uh, sisters or wives or something, uh, <laughs> she she uh, raises the fifty thousand dollars, bails him out, and they Sucks all his dick. Every, all of them flee Texas, banging in the back of the cab, mm-hmm. baby. Mm-hmm. Hey, if the cab is a rocking, yeah. come on in. Are we there yet? I hope not. Uh, I'm about to be. <laughs> and uh, so this is a point where like the older LeBarons kind of split off from the family. Oh, yeah, now they're looking down on it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And now he- Heber and, like, the teenagers, they form their own thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. 90210 style. And they move, da, 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 da. They da, move to da, da. Phoenix. 
But also, so so it, it, was it that, or was it that this was just good timing for the older people? Because because obviously, you can't just leave any time. You know, when Heber's fleeing, maybe that's the time you can flee. Well, Heber right? also doesn't give a living fuck about the older people. Right. Well, but he'll kill them if they flee. Right. Yeah. So so they're fleeing. And the snowbirds, man. Let's go so for the winter. So when now that he's on the run. Now they, ah. they figure, okay, here's our chance to, Time to get, cut our get ties in. with this guy. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Heber. And that, that was uh, uh, December 26, 1986. Now, earlier that year, uh, there had been a series of letters sent to former members of the church uh -huh. who had left the church and were on their own. Baby, and, come back. And the letters were signed something equivalent to Leo Ivaniak, claiming that, if 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 they don't join his church, mm. they're 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 gonna get the atonement. Fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gonna get the atero treatment. And yeah. so, uh, <laughs> and so, they they bring those letters to the FBI, and Leo is questioned. And this case, because the ca of of all of these murders, and the moment the FBI gets those letters, it becomes it becomes news. Mm -hmm. And so Leo, who has now started his own. Uh, business in in California has joined a like vitamins. has joined a, a conceivably non murderous Mormon group out there. Right, I have a, a chain of salons. Yeah, and I don't kill. Well, them I love to cut hair, <laughs> specifically women's hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually irrigation services. Uh, okay. I learned how with all of my uh, wives. I just uh, I just love chopping these mops. I just, mm -hmm. I'll cut anything. Wigs. <laughs> <laughs> Prices, <laughs> <laughs> but not corners. <laughs> also get you a bit of a deal on the fridge. <laughs> Throw that there might in. be one of my cousins in it. I don't know, but you can keep it. <laughs> uh, but he had, uh, he you know, he had uh, seemingly quieted down and 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 had been hidden from uh, the spotlight. Yeah, uh, but with those letters coming out. He then, uh, I don't know whose idea this was, but he holds a public press conference stating that he doesn't have anything to do with that. Is irrigation services buildings? Uh, right next to Four Seasons. Well, it's, it's, in, it's in the town that he lives in. Yeah. And where does he live? Uh, in California. At, at maybe I want to say like Santa Cruz area or something. Hey. Yeah. I wonder much. how he got so good at digging. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have? And uh, it brings him out into the open. And so at some point it, in, so in May 1987, he gets a call from, uh, from someone who says, hey, can you come out to my house uh, at this address and uh, check out, uh, the, can, can you like, uh, you know, give me a quote on, on some work? Oh. And, Wet work. And, and, and Anderson, <laughs> Anderson notes that if, if, if Leo had called that number back, he would have found... Uh, that it went to a bar, mm. and the bar, upon the phone ring, would have found that the phone was actually now glued to the phone box, or the or the uh, payphone. The, the the receiver the was receiver. glued to the hook. To the hook. So then he would not have found out that it was a bar because it would have kept ringing. But he also would have. Hi, you've reached Leo's Bar and Grill. But but no, I mean the bar would have been like something happened yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. Met, you know. The fucking phone. Yeah. <laughs> we can't get out of here. <laughs> we can't call our wives and tell them we're not coming home. <laughs> we can't tell our kids we went out for cigarettes for a <laughs> heart of milk in ten yeah. years. <laughs> Whoever did this is a serious prankster, and I respect it. <laughs> I respect him. <laughs> But uh, uh, Leo, uh, the cradle, that's what it is. Uh, is but Leo, uh, he goes out to this irrigation call, and he is never seen again. Oh. And, uh, Jesus Christ. This is what the... Um, I mean, this is some like, serious yellow page research on the, on, the, on the... Well, he was driven out into the public spotlight. Yes. Right, but like... Local irrigation look up. and Leo... Mm -hmm. You gotta look... Him. Well, I guess you can... Yeah, you can look up Leo's irrigation yeah, in you can, Cruz. Yeah, I mean, you can, wait, he, that was But it's not name. as easy as it sounds. No. I mean, it'd take at least a day. Yeah, you might have to call four or five numbers. That's a lot. You no, know, but I mean, they didn't know, like... It's a few, you know? They didn't know he was in California. He could have been anywhere, right? Right, right. They're not getting fucking national TV broadcasts. And like, Look, I am a simple irrigator. <laughs> They've got all these operatives, you know? they got these operatives scouring operatives local TV Operatives are standing channels. by, yeah. waiting for Leo to step out into the spotlight. They, they got those girls with tattoos and John Wick looking at every local TV station. Yeah. We got a hit on Leo. 
In Santa Cruz, California, sir. <laughs> Well, well, I mean, what, what happened? It was, it was, you know, the story would be published in, and maybe even a national newspaper. Do you think they're reading it? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, clearly, they are. Yeah. But I mean, surprising. Yeah. At least one of them. There's like a yeah. fucking hundred. Uh, Odds are. Yeah, one of them can read. Yeah, Le- so Leah Na- of Avaniak never seen again. Uh, um, this is what the uh, sheriff's lieutenant Ken Oaks had to say about the scene. He said. It was a very strange, very interesting missing persons case. And initially, I was quite suspicious about it. There was something about the scene that didn't seem right, you know? Part of his dental plate, a couple of shell casings, some dried blood. It all seemed almost too obvious. <sighs> Wait, his what, dental what plate- scene? <laughs> The scene of where his body, like, where he... Should have been? Where he, because, where they found he his van. He just upped and disappeared from this place with dried blood, blood shell, shell casings, casing, and his and dental, dental plate. plate. Oh, God. And there was something funny about yeah, it. Yeah, it just seemed very suspicious. It didn't sit right with me. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like he wanted to leave. I can't put my finger leave. on it, yeah. but... You know, I'm getting, like, an eerie feeling, guys. <laughs> is anybody else... <laughs> I don't know. Is anybody else hungry? Yeah. Am I, is that the feeling I'm getting? Is it hunger? <laughs> it, <laughs> I'm hungry. Let's. I am hungry. Let's go get a salad. Yeah. yeah. The dental thing, I think, is what did it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, what that's what did it. I started thinking about El Dante. <laughs> El, yeah. El, 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 let's go. Del, Del Taco. Taco. Del. Del. Yeah. Yeah. Macaroni grill. Uh, fa- family style. Yeah. You know, we're on the clock right now. So. The shell casing. We'll get some stuffed shells. The sti- <laughs> that's what it is. The city pays. I just for have it, low blood so sugar. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. The blood. Yeah. <laughs> it almost is. Too, it, is it is a you know, case. You got to read the signs. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, you got to read the signs. And if, and if we stay there past seven, we get overtime. So, I mean. No. Right. And uh, business, 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 business. We can expense this. That's yeah. right. Part of an investigation. This is part of an ongoing investigation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Next thing I'm investigating <laughs> is this macaroni and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I think there might be a clue in there. <laughs> Really I think I'm going to go investigate really the salad bar. <laughs> <laughs> Pasta salad's technically salad, right, Johnson? <laughs> right? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Ken, you're funny. <laughs> a few months after this, <laughs> a few months after this, Daniel Ben Jordan, um, he's he uh, he his family has left the church. They they uh, they have a house. Uh, it might, I think it was Denver. I can't remember exactly, but um, one of the kids, one of the teenagers from Hebrews. Uh, shows up and he says, "Like, like I've I've fled them. Uh, you're the only people I can live with." Uh, he joins them uh, he, for a couple weeks. Uh, th- they all the whole family goes on this hunting trip. Oh. Uh, Daniel Ben Jordan one morning goes out to take a piss. Yeah, uh, he's shot and killed. Uh, the police uh, can't put it together. They're not sure if someone just like showed up out of the blue or if yeah, it like was... when I saw like three holes in his head. Wait, Daniel Ben Jordan went to what faction? He went, so so he took he went his, to Hebrews. He no, he took his family and had left after Hebrews. Irville died. Got it. And so and so he was on the a list. Ah, he was, so of on the, the posthumous he, list of twenty. Yes. So ah. he was on that list. He literally he literally left a list of enemies. I think that yes. is so fucking amazing. Yeah. God, these you know what? These guys gotta get got. And Leo, know, even though I'm gone, Leo so was also on that list. Even though Leo's the guy who I'm your best took friend. the list out of the jail. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Didn't well, he, didn't he well, read it <laughs> and maybe just like put some white out on top? Yeah, like yeah. Leo DiCaprio. <laughs> who, who is Dio Ivani? Dear yeah. Leo, if you're reading this, <laughs> Skip. I, don't, I don't. I don't want it to get traced back to me. I'm sure you understand. <laughs> your friend. <laughs> Irvil. <laughs> Don't read any further. <laughs> God's watching. Yeah, please do not visit my planet. <laughs> <laughs> I will be fucking your wife there. A couple of my sisters as well. <laughs> you might like that sort of thing. I'm sorry, can we take one more quick break? Yes. Real quick. And we're back. Now, Mormania is running <laughs> wild. Brother, stage. sister, half-sister. The crazy rises to the top. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Daniel Ben Jordan, he's been, uh, he's been murdered. And the cops, um, uh, they, there's, they can't f- figure it out. Um, we got to get a copy of this list. I just, uh, I don't, it was just one last thing. 
The, yeah, well, yeah. There's no, there's, there's no Colombo in. Uh, I think he was in I don't know, Columbia, Mi- Michigan, or Denver or something. I don't. Um, yeah, it's just a guy named Ken. Something seems funny. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Man, you've been Jordan, been murdered. <laughs> I'll tell you, Dan will play and bullets and, you know, uh, uh, some blood. And, and we, all, we and found a handwritten we, note. <laughs> some didn't sit funny. So I went and had a water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> we found a map, a map quest back to where they came from. But Look, I figured, I don't want to bother them. I just had it up, turned upside down and inside out. Look, anybody can do it. It's suspicious. <laughs> no, I, I had to print the clue out and my, my, my laser printer went out of toner. And I yeah. just said, well, I'll get to it after vacation. Look, th- this... This Russian millionaire just shot himself in the head twice. I mean, it's pretty suspicious. Uh, Fell out of a window, et cetera. Plus, he fell. (laughs) As it happens. (laughs) Tales old as time. So, uh, so no, but because of this, they do, the cops do arrest a bunch of LeBarons. The men, their wives, uh, children. Oh, they don't arrest the children, but uh, the children. They enslave them. uh, uh, They're already uh, working full time. (laughs) Yeah. A bunch of the children are are put in in foster homes, and uh, I believe I believe they're they're even like they're split up. Um, hmm. Weird. So they can't corroborate their stories. Smart. But that one guy, he was a he was a he was a dust. And then the one time I found a ball. <laughs> but no, but uh, my dad is God. <laughs> your dad is God too. My God, that guy could be your dad guy. <laughs> These kids are good. <laughs> they uh, they they don't have any. Um, they don't have any evidence to keep them in jail, uh, and but they do. They do try to hold on to the kids, and then after they release all of LeBaron's, just the same night in January, all of the kids just disappear from all of the foster homes there. Whoa! They threw up the fucking LeBaron signal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, we, I mean, you can all, you can also like imagine the the, the adu- little LeBaron or <laughs> Sheepers. <laughs> the, <laughs> <laughs> the the like what would the symbol be? A dumpster with fumes coming out. <laughs> yeah, <on? laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the time to garden has come, my friends. <laughs> Damn, dude. It's uh, a harvest moon. And uh uh you know, that's January nineteen eighty eight. And then um we'll we'll now go to the uh to June twenty seventh, nineteen eighty eight. Mm. Um or, or or leading up to that, and 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 the thing that gave uh, uh, the Scott Anderson book its title, and also the thing that led me to this story, uh, was this just random, uh, not uh, Reagan Twitter, Bush stickers everywhere. The uh, Twitter Twitter account called "Today in 1977." That just like huh. this is a story from 1977, and um, so the the Chenoweths were. One of the families that um, Irville had uh, listed a bunch of them on on his his list. Good God! Um, Eddie Chenoweth was one. Eddie. Uh, Eddie Marston was one. He was affiliated with the Chenoweths. I think he married one of the Chenoweth wives. Yeah. One of them pissed me off. I don't remember which, but uh, and, and Mark Mark Chenoweth, and they were all around. They were all living around the Houston area with their families, and um, you know they. They had, you know, they would have, they had large families and they were, but largely like they had their own, and they had their own businesses, uh, appliance businesses. Salvage. And, but they had, they had, they had moved away from the church Mm. and yes, they had participated, um, possibly in some, in some bad things, but you know, so they had. That was in my former life. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and so. That was my terrestrial life. (laughs) Uh, That's what I'm talking about. Telestial life. So. (laughs) They they had I'm eye on the celestial though I'm gonna tell you some na- and they all lived in, in separate neighborhoods in separate areas in the Houston area metropolitan mm. yeah area. Did they still have a gang of wives or oh yes of course oh. so so the, the people in their neighborhood they they knew it, like they they were like okay interesting family but they don't make a lot of noise yes there's a lot of cars in the driveway but it's all good like they don't they don't, they don't cause start them up they're not partying a lot you know. Um, they keep to themselves. They don't cause any problems. And that was a big thing about like Irville was like, you know, when the family, when we move into these neighborhoods, we don't move to poor areas. We move to middle class areas and, and we make them poor. And, and so because, because, (laughs) because (laughs) the property values 
down. It, you're much. It, it's much less suspicious to law enforcement, right? That there's a problem with the people in the middle class. Yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah. I mean, um, middle class people fuck in the back of the pickup truck all the time. Yeah, but only when they're driving through like Mexico or something. And hey, man, it's his sister. So yeah, we don't want to make look. It's family. We don't like we we don't want to upset Mr. LeBaron. Yeah. The LeBarons pull a lot of weight around here. Mm-hmm. What with their with salvage the, yeah, business, and the, yeah, and the large Trash. families. Not to mention they take. You know, quite a heap off the taxpayer with the way they scavenge garbage. I, I mean, mean the, the waste we management got, alone is saving yeah. upwards of uh, four to five million a year. Yeah, and also only picking up once every three weeks since uh, they uh, moved uh, into the neighborhood. Also, I don't remember if I mentioned the first episode, but like they would, they would. <laughs> one of the ways that they would make money was by abusing um, the welfare system by yeah. having like multi- Actually, multiple, multiple <laughs> families in multiple states taking yeah. multiple. Welfare checks and like going, they would take a check in this state and then go to Welfare the other state. Queens. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The thing Reagan you know, was yeah, worrying yeah, about. Yeah. They showed a nice Mormon they family. Yeah. yeah, yeah nice. They, well, there's a simple uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, family of about 25. The <laughs> white yeah. Mormons yeah. Uh, abusing the welfare system in one of our God good, uh, communities good, in Houston. Good Christian white people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Doesn't happen. No, it was this one. These motherfuckers, man. It was, it was just one black lady in Chicago. I know. <laughs> Can you imagine the LeBarons laughing at them? <laughs> they some black lady did it. <laughs> they got to drive in a Chrysler LeBaron in the ad. Can you believe it? <laughs> Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he knows. I swear to God. I swear to God. They pinned it all on one black lady in Detroit. Meanwhile, <laughs> I got four murders on me. <laughs> I got bodies on me. <laughs> I'm collecting about 10 paychecks. I'm collecting a check for everybody in the trunk. Here's the thing. When you got no ID, they got no idea. Dig. <laughs> no, dig. <laughs> We're an irrigation business yeah. if you have to bury your sister-in-law. We're the, yeah. We really act, acquiesce the new irrigation business. So, uh, yeah. I know you get wet. <laughs> Work. <laughs> Uh, uh, so, um, and also, I mean, the, it, I, there was a lot of China with this. I'm not, sh- they shouldn't all, um. You can lump them together. It's okay. So remember Isaac, the, the 15 year old or. The wee boy. Isaac the Baron. Yeah. yeah. So he went through a series of, um, mental instability and. That's puberty, dude. Uh. I'm like, I suck LeBaron. Well, yeah, he, I mean, he had, tes- he testified against his family too, right? Uh, but eventually they they um, they let him out, and oh. he, he spent um, a, a short time at one of the Chandler's house, uh, where um, he was uh, he, he was twenty years old, and um, the cops said uh, that he committed suicide. Mm. They said that. Yes. But it was some there was something funny, you know, while we were discussing at the Olive Garden after the grisly murder scene. Yeah, you know there was just something that we were like, you know, I think this guy just disappeared. But like, yeah. when I had a little bits of itty, bitty, bitty bits of brain, I was picking out yeah. of my jacket. <laughs> I just thought, you know, this something doesn't all add up. Yeah, it's so sad. More you breadsticks. Know? He uh, he beat himself to death with a baseball bat, yeah. and um, you know there was just bits of his head everywhere, and uh, he must have really wanted to, you know, off himself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, in 1983, I, anyway. Isaac was picked up from uh, the, the hospital by Lily and Mark Chenoweth. Uh, he had testified against Mark during the Allred trial, oh. the Rulon Allred trial. So I don't know why. Hey, I'll get in the car. I, don't, I mean, he was 20, so he, I guess he could make his own decision. But, Swear it's all good, Mark. Uh, yeah. Promise. Um, uh, yeah. And, uh, and during the Allred trial, he had said, uh, this is from Anderson, had frequently cited his brother-in-law. Uh, as one of those who would show no hesitation in killing him. Mark? Yeah. Mark, Mark. loves killing. Is, <laughs> who's my emergency contact? Mark. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he's also my he's also my emergency contact for the wrong reason. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah who's who? Who, do I, who would I sign up? Who would I want to pick me up if I get released? Yeah, Mark. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If, he con- if he contacts me, it's an emergency. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the only number I got memorized, pal. Yeah. Oh, anyway, God. oh, God. I got a conflicted relationship with Mark. Let me oh, tell you. The emergency is going to kill me, but also... Oh, God. Hey, Honor, you get it. You wear wigs. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to keep the name straight. You know, everyone's got three of them. They're all guys. Yeah. Uh, he, he was, he was uh, killed with a twenty two caliber rifle. Uh, that was between his legs. What? 
Um, with, he was killed with the rifle between his legs? Well, they, they found the, the twenty two caliber rifle between his knees. Yeah. Uh, like Kirk Cobain's he, he shot oh, himself. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he didn't like... Um, the, officers, the officers who were brought to the scene had no idea anything about the LeBaron family and the China Willis and their involvement with it. You folks must be awful um, upset. But uh, uh, so there were two other bullets had been fired in that room. One in the closet door, the other one into the ceiling. Also, he was dead for a while before his body was found. Mm. Uh, since the middle of the night, and somehow no one in the house heard the shot uh, less than 10 yards away. I'd the three gunshots, uh, and still it was uh, marked as a suicide. Mm. The best and the brightest, folks. Yeah, they're the really, best, uh, um, you know, they like to get uh, it done and over with. Well, because it's lunchtime. It is lunchtime. And happy hour only lasts a little while. <laughs> and these dogs are barking. I swear. <laughs> I swear. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, maybe. What do you maybe, want me to do? Get my flashlight out. It's Look around. Time. Yeah. Ask, uh, uh, pose questions. These people are grieving. And I am let me, starving. Let me, uh, the person who called me said it was a suicide. Do we want to call them a liar? Like, yeah. Do you think that there's a part of them, who the law enforcement apparatus in that, these places where that's afraid that in all places? Well, no, no, that, that, that's a reasonable lazy. question. Uh, that's that, my, that's, that, that is my reasonable uh, question. Reasonable question is afraid, what is, what is and your point of lazy is also mm -hmm. well, valid. What were you gonna say? Mine is let the wolves take themselves out. Well, but the officers didn't know anything about the LeBarons. Well, oh so, uh, yeah. All how about all three? Huh? Yeah. I'm starving. Uh, these people are creepy and weird. They might kill us. Um, and, and they're and, killing themselves. As long as they're killing right. each other. Oh, yeah. Well, they, uh, yeah, they definitely don't care. It's like... They're, they're, it's, you know, it's a fucking, you know, circular firing squad with these yeah. people. And I think... Um, um, the idea Someone's of... Someone's killing freaky cult members? Yeah. I'll have a long lunch. But it's a thing, too, where you go, like, oh, oh, like almost, um, you know... Uh, Law enforcement isn't afraid and accountable until there is like you know uh, a congregation after them, and then they go like, "Oh, we're gonna get into like some religious shit and persecution and blah blah." blah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They have the fucking ACLU down here. Somebody call Elvis. He's got all them badges. <laughs> yeah. yeah, or Herschel Walker. Yeah. He's yeah. The king. Yeah. I no, I, I think uh, uh, there's a writer Alex Preen who who's who's lived in New York for a while and, and just I come up uh, come up. He's lived in New York for a while. Well, he's but a like writer. He 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 he's, he summed up like. A, a lot of the police stories that we see in the news, especially, and a lot of, I think, you know, at least for me, like personal experience with the cops, like they just do what is most convenient for them. Yes. And if, if, if calling it a suicide so they don't have to investigate is just like, if they can, if that's convenient, they can get away with that. They'll do that. Like there are certain things that. And it depends on the, like, you know, convenience is a very, um, expensive. A, a big umbrella term. Yes, absolutely. Right, because like the convenience can can be influenced by the class and race of. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, right, so right, yeah. Right. Not Bri just Bri like Bri Brianna Taylor is is, is uh, not a thing where they're gonna um you know like fucking be like oh this it'd be so easy to just get out of here. Right. Well, right. no, but the convenience was just firing wildly into the. That was a lot easier than like. <gasps> right. Yeah. But there's a the, point. But or, or, I mean, or also, none of that is convenient. No, 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 no. no but you like, organi be, organize your lives. They, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't follow through on where the guy actually lived. They just. Right. It was very. Con they was, I mean, con yeah. Convenient maybe is. That's what I'm. That's what I'm getting at. Is that convenient thing, can yeah. be convenient can be almost too broad of a term. But I, what you I think the core of your argument is correct. But it, the, so much of that, you know, if we can. You know, chalk this up to mistake, right? And perhaps that will, is convenient. unless this yes. person, you know, yeah. has yeah. pull or you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, clout in the town, or do you, do you or think, people will get pissed if we don't investigate. This right. is I'm, I'm, right. I'm, I'm, like I'm, there's nothing convenient about a like a midnight no knock raid where you got to work. Right, right. There's nothing convenient about. But, but but there is like yeah, I guess there's like the the laziness before that is like yeah. well like let's not make sure it's let's the not right make place. sure because who. Because who gives a shit? Yeah, but then they, even yeah. if we do shoot somebody, nobody cares. Yes, about them. well, right. it's a thing. It's a thing of uh, when we don't have to do anything, we won't. When we Exa do it, when we, yes, exactly. When we do have to do yes. something, we will do it on um, people that really can't uh, clap back at us. Yes, right. that's that's a much better way of saying. And it. Yes, 
But also, you know, like there's a very, very specific deci- decision tree <laughs> yeah, involved in the negligence of yeah. law enforcement, and it involves lunch. Yeah, yeah but, but <laughs> uh, a few. <laughs> but I do wonder also, and th- and this is maybe giving all, uh, uh, too much credit, but I wonder if there's an aspect of police work where and and, and you know uh, the 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 brotherhood and uh, being in the job where all of you kind of know a little bit that like. This is mostly a show of pretending to be in in authority. You know what I mean? I wonder. I wonder. And like that. That almost seems like a, like a, a like a, a reason to dismiss them getting militant and and uh, and treating us all like animals. But I wonder. Well, that's part of the show. Yeah. Well, yeah. Right. But it's the but, show of force. Yeah. But, yeah. But I wonder if they actually know. Like, dude, we're fucking. Well, they are vastly outnumbered. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, they're incredibly outnumbered. Exactly. Yeah, but they're, they're, all, they're also taught to be afraid. Well, I, well, also, they are, I mean, they, and, and rightfully so. It's not a job that I would want to do because anybody that you pull over automatically hates you. Yes. Automatically thinks you are a fascist. Yeah. But like, you know, the, the truth is, is that they are outnumbered and they are outgunned. Yeah. They are better organized and funded. Yeah. But, it, you know, Most for of, every uh, cop in, this, in the city, there's, I don't know, 25,000 Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. But when they when they pull someone over, odds are they aren't outgunned. That's the, true. That's true. But that's uh, the time. Yeah, they uh, around the individual. Well, that's why they yeah. they fucking flash the flashlight in your face, and that's why. I mean, there's a reason they do all the things. But they, is, but they don't. But, they're, but because they're, when they're, they show up to a domestic call, who knows who's in what room? Yep. And, yeah. But, but, and you step out of line, and it, emotions are heated. Yeah. That's when they they show up and they're like, uh, I heard there was trouble. Uh, Right. Anyway, we we could talk it, about this all day. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So everybody should be afraid of everything all the time. Both, <laughs> no, both sides. No, 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 we're, both, no, we're safe. Jesus safe? Christ. No, we're safe. Jesus Christ. That's what anyway. Joe Peter said. Yeah, Jesus my dad. Christ. Wise man. <laughs> Don't even call that box a safe. Call it a strong box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Hasn't been, hasn't been broken into yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's safe <laughs> so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It's yeah. It's, come on. How about I just take the box? Yeah. It's only a window. Until it's a fucking vent. <laughs> and it's only a safe until it's a window. <laughs> so. <laughs> so the, the uh, Houston area, 1988, back to there. Uh, Eddie Marston, uh, has his family is in, in one house in the neighborhood. Uh, Eddie Chenoweth, his house is in one neighborhood. And uh, Mark Chenna with uh, his house is in one neighborhood, the house uh, where Isaac was probably murdered. Mm. Um, neighbors notice that there seems to be like, it's like they're doing, there's like a car that like slows down when it drives through the area. Mm. Just kind of, there's a little bit too, too much activity. Mm. There's just stuff going there's doings. on. There's doings, there's doings. Yeah, there's, and, um, <laughs> and those three are all on the list. And uh, June 27th, 1988, uh, June 27th is also the, the day of the murder of Joseph Smith, and uh, 4 o'clock is reportedly uh, when he died. Oh, no. And uh, around 4 o'clock... Um, PM, and a PM... Or earlier in the day. If you're just joining us, it's 4 o'clock in the p.m., and it's time for retribution. Early in the day, Eddie Marston gets a call to uh, to pick up. Uh, someone wants to sell a, a, a washer. Uh, they give an address. Not a if, good sign. If he had uh, if he, sell a washer. If he had looked up the address at all, he would have found that the house it was abandoned. Oh, well, how is he going to look that up? Fucking Google? Exactly. I mean, I guess there's not Make really Make some way. phone calls. Or, well, I think that's the thing. If he had called the number back, he would have found... I, th- I think it's the same in this kitchen situation. So the person called the number from the abandoned house. No, what that's what about? I'm saying. If he called that number, <laughs> what back, number? The number. The, that, the people who called him. You can't star sixty nine. It's, it's 1988. They left a number. Ah. When you called, when you called to get a washer picked up, you leave a number. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. and there's a difference between an address and a phone number. They left both. I think when you take when you take Do you the think address, this you take... person left the phone number of the abandoned address that they gave them. Do you think? Not, were... No, not the abandoned address, mm-hmm. but another number yes. that might have been populated by a number of cult members. No, probably the number from the place they were calling at, or maybe yeah, some which, random is, not, which is like a fucking seafood house or something. Yeah, right. and a, a bar, a bar. Fo- no one will ever. And the yet. phone has been and glued, glued to, to the, the fucking cradle. lobster. Yeah. Tank. So nobody can say like, hey, it's yeah, it's lobster. City. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they, they dropped the phone. They dropped the handset in the lobster tank at the front desk. <laughs> ah, it's a lobster, <laughs> lobster city with their claws. The law, daddy. <laughs> we pee out of our faces. <laughs> Get us out of here. I <laughs> snapped <laughs> one rubber band off my claw. Get me out. <laughs> it's like being in a cult. <laughs> it's like living in a prison. <laughs> so uh, uh, earlier in the day, Eddie Mar- Eddie Chenoweth also receives a call to pick up. Uh, a washer at an abandoned house. Oh, Sal, I'll be there in about twenty. And uh, and uh, Mark Chenoweth is, you know, he's just he he doesn't. But at four o'clock on that day, which is supposedly the time that Joseph Smith was killed, ascended uh, to his planet. Eddie Marston uh, pull, pulls into a driveway. Uh, doesn't he doesn't see anybody there? A car pulls up behind him. Break yourself. And and blocks him in. But he gets out and he goes to shake their hand and ask him about the washer. They shoot him dead. Nah. Uh, Wait a minute. Uh, Mark, claws. Mark Chenoweth is in his office at his appliance store. Someone comes in, shoots him dead at four o'clock. Damn. Around four o'clock, Eddie Chenoweth is. Um, uh, <laughs> he takes his eight-year-old daughter with him, drives to go pick up the washer. Good idea. Uh, She's the only one that can fix it. <laughs> he. Same thing. He pulls into the driveway. His car is blocked in. Um, he gets out. Someone walks up, shoots him dead. The girl starts screaming. That guy then shoots her dead. Oh my no. god! And all everybody involved drives off. There are no witnesses. Uh, and these are called the four o'clock murders. Damn. Well, that's the name of the book. And uh, immediately, all of these different police forces in Houston get a call they go to it and then it takes a little while and they all go well, wait a minute because at this point they were supposed to be the Olive Garden yeah, yeah so yeah, but yeah. some went to Buca yeah, and yeah. then the other oh, went yeah. to Macaroni Grill yeah. and the, the, the Maggiano's was the, packed the waiter was late with the coffee after dessert and yeah, was, yeah, 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 yeah 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 coffee yeah. they're more no, the police. The police. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank yeah. you. They love coffee. Oh, and they, donuts. Oh, forget it. That's what's dessert. But but, but um, these were all people involved with LeBarons. The Phoenix Police Force had actually, uh, the I, I don't remember the name of the uh, the female detective and, and her partner who had been working on it. Reardon? But, yeah. Patty yeah, Patty Reardon. Reardon. Yeah, she was one of them. And so, I always remember in a lassie, you know what and, I mean? Yeah. And so the kind of like... <laughs> Through, throughout the, I believe throughout the country, like the kind of like some some people involved with LeBarons were all killed at the, at the same time. It's just uh, standard time. Jesus Christ, we had a fucking murder here. Too. Oh hey. And so so she like she you know she's someone who had been following the LeBarons for for a bit and um, and then plus she wasn't allowed in any of these fucking Italian <laughs> yeah, exactly. restaurants. And she was she was a woman, so she wasn't allowed in any of like the cop groups where yeah, they just fuck off all day. I guess I'll sit here and do my desk work. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> invites me out for an all-you-can-eat pasta buffet. I'm here, I'm here at Buchanan's having a night, having a, having a pint by myself. I'll tell you something, Ted Bundy would still be out there murdering if I was taken to one fucking lobster fest. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so I, I guess in the end things all work out. Oh yeah. Yes, yes. Praise the bigotry because that's what got me. It was got me. You know, I'll never never forget when the call came in and there was a lobster himself in the tank. (laughs) And he says, Jesus Christ, (laughs) these dirty wops are turning me into a a, a lobster gnocchi. He says, they're picking us off one by one. I swear to Christ. He says, I'm next. He goes, I can fight off the other fellas because I've got the band free. (laughs) You see, so I choke them, you know, and I jack it when I choke (laughs) them. Of course I jack it when I choke them. I'm not a fool. (laughs) Hey, I'm not going to pass up a, a sturdy, intense. Orgasm. <laughs> I think clearer after a good night. <laughs> anyway, Patty O'Riordan, be well, love. It's just Patty O'Riordan. Patty O. Is that an Irish lobster? <laughs> yes. <laughs> They do have. Well, they, they're red. They do have. <laughs> well, he might be Native American. <laughs> they do have lobsters. <laughs> My people are. <laughs> no. The <laughs> tribes. No. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> Good idea, Matt. Go ahead, shut it down. So Patty, or, Patty Reardon, and, uh, <laughs> the call goes out, and so the uh, cops uh, start, you know, putting some pieces together, and eventually they um, they're like, "This lady has ideas." They 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 find the the Hebrew group in like a hotel somewhere, and they eventually get them for auto theft. Hmm. Uh, they not murder, but they arrest them all for. Auto theft. Mm. That's because they, they crossed big auto. Detroit. Yeah. They crossed the big auto manufacturers, and that's how they got them. Oh, because their name is LeBaron. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good the idea. The Chrysler family was like, ah, ah, This ah. will simply not do. Nope. Uh, they, uh, no one would, no one would uh, talk, and so they were. It was that, it was that welfare queen in Detroit. She yeah. made a few phone calls up the ladder. <laughs> yeah, she said, yeah. <laughs> These motherfuckers are pinching my <laughs> squeeze, man. One of them's a lobster. <laughs> He's cool. <laughs> He's cool. <laughs> I think he might be native or something. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Chrysler, they're on your LeBaron name through the mud, sir. I don't know how you feel about that, but I wouldn't let it stand. Now, uh, is it Heber and... Do you know uh, Shadow Bay Biscuits? Heber and uh, four others are, uh, uh, they do plead guilty to uh, auto theft charges. And they're sentenced to something like five or ten years. Uh, but in 1993, one of the younger brothers, Richard, he does agree to text testify against Heber and two others for the murders. Damn! They are found guilty of murder. Oh! Um, Four o'clock murder. So like yeah. five years, he does five years of time and he's like, this is, now I'm going to say I can't deal with this shit. Right. Or, uh, I can't do parole, man. Uh, what? Uh, Why are you doing it now? Well, well, maybe he didn't get parole or maybe he, maybe, I don't know if. Like, he, I can't, I'm jerking off too much in here. Let me out. I don't, I don't know <laughs> if he was uh, even arrested, you know, you know. It, oh, so this fellow that, that I, testified. I, 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 I don't we, know if we, he was arrested we do, or not. We may, it, it's up for debate. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm uh, not for debate. It's up for debate. It's a simple fact we can't yeah, We just out. don't know yet. I mean, no, <laughs> but it's just, we don't. What I'm, what I'm saying agree is, agree to disagree. It, <laughs> that's like your opinion, man. But we just all we know is that five years after some people were sentenced, five this fella yeah. years later. Uh, it, and it, 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 in fact, like uh, multiple times, Heber had while he was in jail, uh, had written to the Arizona prisons going, hey, are there any, like, other warrants out for me? <laughs> and he's just, just, just curious. Just by chance. Seriously, because he, he wanted to file some motions, and at least five times he had done this, asking about warrants out for him, and it took, he did this for, like, two years, and then eventually... They looked, and they found more warrants? Eventually, in 1990, Texas found... The bank robbery from Richardson. Oh my god. god, damn it! What a fucking idiot! It was no, here no, under this, like it was under this dental plate. No, but I mean, like, who <laughs> who would think to look under these shell casings and dental plate for this? But well, so here's here's the thing. He, Heber was Heber was just going, hey, like he wasn't saying I did it. He was going like, am I like what else are you it, looking at? Is, is yeah, is there anything else you're looking at? Are we done yet? And it, what else and, you got? And it worked because the Texas authorities had completely forgotten about the case. And so when they tied him to that bank robbery case, they were completely unprepared to go for trial, and they had to drop all of his charges for the bank robbery and, yeah, yeah. and the attempted, the felony charge of killing a cop. Or I'll tell you murder. one thing. Because of all the other yeah. new charges they discovered? No, no, because they didn't discover anything. They discovered only that, and then they were so unprepared. Oh, because, because he kept asking for other stuff. That they neglected their existing case? Because they couldn't, because he kept using fake names, they couldn't bring him, they couldn't connect him to things. And then eventually they connected him to this one thing, and he, he was doing that to- As a red herring. He was other, other shit. No, he was doing that because he thought he might have to, like, deal with it at some point, and he wanted to get, like, a step. Okay, Matt. This yes. is very hard to follow. Yeah. Because he's now been found out who he is. When right. he was in Texas and had the indigo paint and he was smurfing it, we didn't know who he was, but now they know who he is. He's in the system. Why would they not finally prosecute him for the fucking robbery? Because they, they know he did. Because they didn't do any fucking work on it to find a way to attach it to him until he did the work for them. Damn, these guys. Uh, here, here's here's why. 
unlimited <laughs> Texas salad <barbecue>. and breadsticks. <laughs> <laughs> unlimited. And in the summer, soup. <laughs> unlimited soup, salad, mm. and breadsticks. Yeah. And you know, all these people, all these LeBarons talk about family. Doesn't compare to the Olive Garden. Uh-uh. Because uh-uh. when you're here, oh, your it. family. Yeah. You can leave anytime you want. We've you got, won't. I don't care if you're a deputy or the DA. Or even we're, Irish. We're all. <laughs> you might even work at Red Lobster. Fuck, you could be the Red Lobster. You yeah. come in with two rubber bands on. <laughs> yeah. When you're here. Amelia, bro. It's we take like off a, the cuffs. It's like Fast and the Furious. So Family. God damn it. That is some bad police work. He uh, uh not even police work. That's like lawyers. Bank bank robberies, minimum of five years, uh twenty-five years. Uh the attempted murder of a police officer in Texas is life imprisonment. And uh He skates. Yeah, he did, well, they had to drop all of those charges. They took him. the rubber bands off the motherfucker. The claws, the law. And, uh, uh... You joined the crustacean nation. <laughs> they got reservations. And, and for two at the bar. He, he, was, he was scheduled to be released uh, from jail in um, uh, 1995. I, I don't believe he was, because it was in, in, in 93. I think the, the book was written in, uh, or released in 93. And then later in 93, the Four O'Clock oh, Murders... Uh, it was released in uh, ninety one or ninety three, uh, ninety three. And but uh, in ninety three, the younger one of the younger brothers uh, testified that uh, he was involved in the murder. And uh, um, I, don't, I haven't found anything that says he was released. So I believe he's still serving. Irvel. He, uh, uh, he, Heber. He, Heber. While he was in jail, though, he, con- he converted to Christianity. Huh. And said not, he's, not Islam. Said he's ashamed of all of his activities. Uh, Wasn't he already a Christian? Yeah. Born again, I guess. Like he, he you know, did, all he did was just kind of like tone different. it down. <laughs> you know, the <laughs> little Mormon. <different>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The little. new print of Christianity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want all them wives and whatnot. I'm born again again by not being born again. You know oh, think- okay, okay, sorry. So in 97, eventually, he got a 45-year sentence. So he will spend... Most of his life. Oh, he'll get out uh, just in time for mandatory electric cars. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. You probably put us on a list, Matt. You yeah. I, I mean, I did think about that <laughs> while doing this. I did think about that. Mm-hmm. Um, Stop I mean, thinking, man. <laughs> so, so. Uh, Make up your mind. Why, while Irville or Baron was alive, there were at least 10 people killed. Jeez. Uh, you know, because of his orders. Uh, but it has been estimated that. Uh, Combine that with the people who killed while he was dead. There's at least 25 people killed because of uh, his blood atonements, and 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 even like, even today, um, there are there there were LeBarons who you know, and uh, I, I from the blog post I read about it. So in, in the in in the early two thousands or uh, uh, mid 2000, 20, 2009 or so, uh, there were a couple of LeBarons who were killed by uh, Mexican mafia because they were um, against the uh, the drug the drug cartels. So uh, yeah, straight, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, there we should make a distinction between Mexican mafia and the cartels. There's two. They are oh, two okay. Big. So the cartels, then, yeah, I believe. Yeah. And, uh, and but it's not no is no. Strong association with the church, you know, I think it's, you know, half generation, half generation, half, you know, and they're not associated, but they are LeBarons in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, one was, uh, there was uh, one man who was, he would, he would organize against the cartels. Yeah. Great. Uh, Good they, luck. they killed him and, and a man who came to like stop them from dragging him out. They killed him too. Uh, in, I think it was 2018, 2019. There was a group of about uh, somewhere in the mid-teens of women and children who were uh, also LeBarons who were uh, trapped and gunned down on the highway Jeez. by the cartel. Right. Since is the father, man. Uh, and, and nothing to do with the Irvilles No, and, but and I'm Hebers. sure they, their business interests probably overlapped. No, I don't think I think Or just I, that there's so many LeBarons that well, I think, listen, we can definitely put it somewhere at the door of Irville. He started on a bad trajectory. Yes, but those people that were killed by the Mexican cartel were not They just they were not bad people. They were in the area because of 
the right. Barons had because started this colony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, and, they, and they're more pissed about jacking it and, uh, you know, snorting some chop than they are about uh, murdering. No, but the, the, you know, the, 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 those women and children that were murdered, there was, that had nothing to do with... Uh, well, the, if you believe in gender and age, that's fine. Matt, but they were fucking moving bodies in fridges, buddy. So, so it, yeah, it might have been 40 years ago, but I don't care. But I, 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 it... it, it I figured someone would bring it up, like in the comments section. But it's like it's a it is it almost seems like a curse, some sort of like yeah. And, that, and there, curse. whoever brings that up is right. Mm-hmm. It is a curse. It's a blood atonement, and it's uh, it's karma. And yeah. uh, I I endorse those wanton killings. Yeah, but uh, so, I think they got into uh, the whole uh, the plans game. Dude, yeah, well, because the they cartels were like, they were like deliver us from Ervil. <laughs> So Between the hours right? of eight and four, <laughs> but also probably seven yeah. tomorrow. So uh, definitely not after four. So it, 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 <laughs> <laughs> these <laughs> delivery windows are murder. <laughs> after the arrest of Heber and a lot of these people, the the the, the Le, that part of the LeBarons largely dissipated. And uh, oh yeah, they had a bad name. And uh, Chenna was sort of much better. Well, Re- Rena Chenoweth would. Uh, uh, she would uh, write a book about her experience, uh, and she released it on the. Same day as um, uh, one of the murders, I forget. I think it might have been the four o'clock murders. And she would later say, Oh, that's my bad. Um, <sighs> oh, forgive me. God. Uh, and, uh, and the, you know, there's various like blog posts. There's uh, the, the book I. Uh, I uh, Blood Prophet. No, there was the, there's that one. There's uh, The Sound of Gravel, this group, uh, this woman, Ruth Warren, or who grew up in uh, Colonial Sound LeBaron. Of gravel. Ugh, uh, that's, that's really bad. Uh, it is. So, it so, is. so there have been there are multiple of them. Good name, honestly. Uh, gr- and best title so far. This so, yeah, so yeah. evocative. Uh, but, but multiple of them have released their stories and you know moved, on, tried to move on from it. Yeah, good luck. Um, there's a lot of people involved. Even Rulon Elred had 26 kids, and that was just, Fucking you know. So, well, that, and I think that's the point that you are making is that the sheer number of of progeny of the LeBaron clan. Yeah. Some of them were going to get murked by the cartels eventually, just by population. Well, that wasn't the point. I was uh, but statistically, that is, that yeah. is a, that's my point. That's, 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 yeah, I mean, the book, so the book does uh, have this family tree of just Irville's kids. I don't want and it. It's, and it's a straight line. It's exhaustive. Ugh. It's a series of straight lines. When, yeah. So, I mean, I think he, I mean, he had... Uh, oh, God. This is my sister's kid. And mine. Wink. The Targaryens wed brother and sister for years to keep the bloodline pure. What? I know. What? Uh-huh. What do you want? Like, don't be sex negative. The, the House of the Dragon. <laughs> Listen, man, I'm already HIV positive. Don't make me sex negative. <laughs> well, diabetes is a nightmare. <laughs> you never wake sh- up. Gotta go back in my cocoon. <laughs> Oh, Matt, what do you think of all that shenanigan- shenaniganery? Yeah, well, what's with the radio silence? Come on. We can't vamp for so this So he, he had about 40 children, uh, Irville did. 40. And Four. then Dude, you, had, that, you, you With how many wives? Had, uh, 13. Oh, and, and then he also had, they had... Not how old were they, how many? <laughs> some of them brought in children from their previous marriages. Uh, also, some yeah. of them fled. Mm. So he didn't always have, you know, 40 plus with him. But mm-hmm. uh, he, he uh, you know... Grew an army mm-hmm. that eventually outlived him and did terrible things. And yeah, uh, I bet that's how a lot of those guys like he just didn't know the names. And that's how those guys got three names. Where he's like, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Billy, uh, Ray, uh, Cyrus, Cyrus uh, yeah. <laughs> Steve, <laughs> Ray, <Vaughan. laughs> James, uh, Earl, Ray. <laughs> Surprised it wasn't Go like get your rifles. Uh, Surprised it wasn't like a uh, 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 door, a uh, uh, light switch, person, uh, doctor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, there weren't a lot of there weren't any juniors, which is uh, it seemed like that's the way. I mean, Foreman, well, George Foreman figured well, that, that out. That's, I mean, that's, I mean that's junior a, starts with Jew, and I don't know how straight, they feel about it. That's yeah, a yeah. straight line back to Irville. You know what oh, I mean? you're right. These so, kids, they never heard of Irville. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I right, don't yeah. know the man. That's true. I'm telling you, I hear, I've never seen this <laughs> house hear, in my life. I hear he's great. I hear he's the prophet. <laughs> yeah. I hear that women should fuck him. But is he my father? Who's to say? What is a father? I mean, yeah. Father and the son. So, uh, well, I mean, 
I don't know. It, it, Is that the story of the four o'clock murders? That's the story of the four o'clock murders. Yeah. Now, did you yeah. find it like uh, slightly erotic, sexually arousing? <laughs> I mean, this guy was fucking his sisters in the back of a pickup truck. I mean, sucking on chili dogs outside the Tasty Freeze has nothing and, on this. Matt, <laughs> so, Matt, I mean, <laughs> and he, Matt, he's just twenty. Yeah, and he had a whole melon camp with him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh God! <laughs> now kids, go out back to the melon camp. <laughs> the dumpster. Second round, shit, No, it's it's insanely tragic. Just like how James Earl Ray is getting down on his knees. I mean, one of the things that that Hebrew said about prison, he was like, "Now I can finally read." He was like, "This is actually nice." Well, you know what's crazy is this Bible, though. <laughs> Yo, you ever read it? <laughs> but, but it, it turns out like, murder is bad. But you can read other books in prison, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like the Quran. <laughs> oh, dude, I mean, Nancy Drew. Okay. 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 Go on. Uh, uh, the Tommy Knockers. Stephen Hawking, A Brief History of Time. Yeah, you could even hey? you could read Christine. Tom Clancy. Dean Koontz. <laughs> Watchers, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Langoliers, anyone? <laughs> They're like little Seven Up cool spots, but they eat up space times. <laughs> They're critters for a uh, time. They're the fourth, fourth dimension. Yeah, the fourth dimension critters. I mean, I've been living my life all wrong. <laughs> Having sex with my sisters in the back of the extended cab. I mean, <laughs> Bronson it's, it's Pinchot's like over here freaking out. <laughs> it's probably like an El Camino. <laughs> he's, he's staring up papers just to soothe himself. I mean, the guy from Perfect Strangers is losing his fucking mind over 4D chess. <laughs> Langoliers. Uh, yeah, I think uh, overall, my takeaways are... Um, yeah, I think, I think uh, the religious freedom aspect of it is a thing where people don't want to um, cross in there. Also, you know, they're, they're, they're literally crossing into, uh, you know, compound territory if, if they're going to wade in there well, to investigate so. these things. Um, so you feel like, you know, that ha we've we've talked about the, this before for a number of profiles of like, oh, fuck, we got to go into this. Man, this culty shit. We got to go into this culty shit. And technically they're allowed to do that part of it. But like, you know, the, the stuff we talked about with the Nation of Islam. The stuff we talked about with that fucking dude who thought he was a pharaoh who was fucking all of his mm -hmm. kids and yeah. everybody in the neighborhood. There like, is a thing too, yeah, but the lone, and, and again, not, not not letting them off, so, you know. Uh, no, or getting them but, off. Uh, but there is a thing where you go like, if you go into a community and they're like, oh, we heard there was a problem. And, they, and like uh, overwhelmingly the chorus goes, there is not a problem. Well, see, see, in, 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 Help in, us. In, 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 in this well, that's the Jonestown. That's no, but, it, but in this case, the were they were settling and where they were, people weren't going to the cops going like, no. Like, I think those kids are being abused. Like, they weren't, that, no, the no. law enforcement didn't. Yeah, they're like, I wish my kids would drag fridges in the house all the time. But law, Wait, can law, I get some of that LeBaron juice? Law enforcement didn't, like, they wouldn't dress up in some way that wasn't, that was, that would stand out. Right. They would move into neighborhoods. They would, they would dress in some, like, Normal clothing, yeah, way, yeah, like long, long, lingerie and wigs. You know, no, no, but like, you know, kids. Yeah, but it, old navy. It would just be like, jail. oh, that's a large family. There's a lot of cars there. <laughs> the only reason that the authorities old ever navy and jail. The only reason the authorities ever like you know got onto their case was because the murders. It yeah, wasn't because oh. it wasn't the abuse. Yeah, it wasn't. It, it was. It wasn't that the fact that the kids weren't going to school. It um, wasn't the fact that they lived in shacks and like it's what, and were people being treated disappeared, terrible. Though. People disappeared. Right? Yeah, and you know the they had the nobody no crime. They had this you know uh, very like you said earlier on maybe even in the last episode as well was this you know they went from being just uh, a family to a crime family. Right, it's very mafia esque uh, devotion. Right. But also, I mean, the inherent structure of it does create a a head of the crime family. Oh, I mean, and it's it's even it's a it's a true patriarchy. Yeah. To the nth degree. To yeah, yeah to the point where you go like, uh, you know, I'm to gonna, the letter I'm, of the word. I'm going. Yeah, I'm going yeah. to go. Uh, you know, be like, oh, I'm gonna try to be like, oh, you know, you're really kind of my favorite wife. You know, you gotta murder somebody for me. I mean, no, no, uh, no, no. God says you do. No, yeah, exactly. You know, a hundred percent. Um, and they believed him. Like that's yeah. the, I mean the, the 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 thing that it's it's such a it, for me it's such a, a an amazingly twisted story of because it's true. Well, no, but the, God, there's God said God did tell. The, there's there yeah. 
the the it initially starts off with this idea of the father going. I had a vision of us creating a, an oasis, this, this amazing city, and and we will grow it. And then, eventually, how like, about Houston? Irville just in his mind, he doesn't do. The, he's not planting trees. Like you know, the the idea with Joel and Verlaine is like seeds, is is like build this town up and we'll make this like wonderful place where people will flock to. And with Irville, it's just power, power, power. Yeah, and he has everybody wrapped under either through fear or misbelief or both. Yeah, manipulation. And that, and yeah. and there's how like yes, twenty five people died, but how many people were also never truly lived, fucked in the head. Never had any education, had just like terrible lives growing up until they were able to leave or oh, anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, like, just, like the thing about this is too is like, you know, how many people were in those rooms and knew the shit was going down, Yeah, knew those people disappeared, and so they have some form of PTSD where they're like, you know, like, uh, you know, the people in the, in the Japanese Red Army, uh -huh. where it's like, I could have intervened and stopped, right? you know, this ritualistic killing, yeah. and I didn't. Yeah. And... You know, I'm not in jail for it, but also like, yeah, you know, I gotta live with that forever. Yeah. Belonging to a group is a very powerful thing for our species, right? Like, you ever work for a corporation? You know what kind of fucked up shit corporations do, and you're like, you're in a, a fucking morale meeting on a Thursday, and you're like eating the donuts, and you're like, yeah, we got more conflict minerals. To make more shit. Like, right, right. Yeah, belonging to a group works like on just micro to mat, like on every level out, wanting mm. to belong is so powerful that like you'll, you'll justify it to yourself for the sake of belonging. And if you think God's doing it, mm -hmm. oh boy, I can't imagine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, he, and then they all believed when he did yeah. say that God did it. And that's, that's. And you want to belong this. to God. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean. I know I do. Yeah, I mean, all. Of I mean, I'm not gonna suck his dick. You would. You would. Yeah. You'd love it. I mean, you know. Get that celestial hog over here, <laughs> you old spinster. You, you promise I'll get my own planet. <laughs> it's gonna Say be, it. It's gonna be dope, Aaron. <laughs> you gotta. You gotta suck the creator's dick. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta suck Jehovah's dick. <laughs> and <Christ>. Yahweh. <laughs> and Elohim. <laughs> and Galactus. <laughs> and Yura Mazda. <laughs> the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Allah's got a Jesus mask. <laughs> <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> that, that was wonderful. I really loved it. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you. Shocking. Yeah. Quite. Uh, I, I was. I, I, yeah. I am scandalized. I'm. Yeah. I'm scandalized. I'm scandalized. Yeah. yeah. Um, I like it. I like it. <laughs> I think it's kind of crazy a little bit that there wasn't more arrests. But oh, I, oh god! But yeah. I think there's a point where you like you go like let's just leave this alone. Again, like because it's like a, a big group thing, you know. Like, like, yeah, maybe yeah. the fire will burn itself out. Yeah, I, I, I can't yeah, say I that that. I mean, that's what I would do. Well, it's a thing. Too, where you're like, <laughs> maybe this fire will self extinguish. Well, and, yeah, but, but you, it didn't. You also got yeah, I know, and it's so fucked yeah. up too because like because they keep breeding because yeah. well, and also because it, it all continued long after you knew they were on to you. Yeah. So you go like, well, well, clearly our attention is not stopping them. Right. Um, but also our attention is fleeting because there's so many good meals. <laughs> I mean, people are throwing away half-eaten Happy Meals all the time. Yes, yeah, and these yeah. guys are gobbling it up. Look, dental I mean, plate just makes me think of lunch. That's all. That I mean, does. the trick it's... is to get into those dumpsters right at ten o two. Yeah, yeah. When After they, when they stop over. serving breakfast, yeah. and exactly. people are like hotcakes. Yeah. See ya, and you're yeah. like, you got hotcakes, hash browns, apple pies. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you know these fucking appliance wizards know how to fix the fucking McFlurry machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. These they're fucking nine-year-old girls are fucking yeah. Riri Williams with the fucking yeah, thing. Yeah, dude, they're fucking tapping the McGriddles for syrup, bottling that <laughs> yeah. shit up. Yeah, they got fucking the Fucking starting a fucking pickup truck with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this thing runs on pure maple, daddy. <laughs> yeah, dude. Never mind the fry oil. <laughs> Get real. <laughs> All right, Did you had your break today? <laughs> break fast. All right, let's ba -da -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> I'm loving it. <laughs> and so will you. I'm loving my family. <laughs> I don't know their names. 
George. <laughs> but I know the way they feel on the inside. <laughs> it's gross, right? You got to tap the sap, daddy. <laughs> oh, uh, let's, would you say worse than the Manson family? Uh, That's a good it's question. Not a uh, yeah, no. Well, they killed more. Yes, um, you're right. Yeah. Um, didn't make the headlines as much. Yeah, they didn't kill Hollywood. The Manson no. thing was was the Hollywood allure. Well, how about this? Let's save it for a Patreon. We've yes. Done we've yes. done, we've yes. done that, enough. That's a good, we've that, done enough. That's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. You got to pay for the good discussion. You got to pay <laughs> yeah, for the good right. discussion. And um, whatever debate happens, I know I'll win it, day. <laughs> you are the master debater. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to hell for it. <laughs> Gosh dang it. And the- oh, God, if only I kill more people and keep my fucking hands busy. <laughs> <laughs> Idle hands in devil's playground. <laughs> Shit. You know what? I only choke myself to keep my other hand busy. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that it made me feel good is... Huh. Well, I guess it's just a fringe benefit. Shit. I um, mean, you know, double your pleasure, double your fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. I love you. My name is John Fahey. I'm Aaron Pita. Get out of here, everybody. We love you. Scarpins on you.